What's happening, everybody, and welcome to this special episode of the True Gamer Podcast, episode two. Uh, also, take two as well of this yes. episode because yes. the first one got fucked up. Um, a podcast hosted by your two gamers for you, the True Gamers. I'm one of your hosts, Eddie, along with the inverted gamer himself, Sheps. How's it going? It's going good. How's it going? Yeah, it's going good. Um, I, do you know what? I'm kind of glad that the first recording got broken, not because we get to hang out again, because I actually don't want to ever spend any more time with you. I was going to say, this is a hot take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But there was some more interesting information that came out oh, that good. It worked out. helped us out right there. Diogo okay. sent us some information, and I was like, okay, I'm going to see the silver lining yeah, in all of yeah. this. Yeah, I mean, we've been upfront about our Patreon goals being that we want to be able to take another day off in the week from mm-hmm. working, you know, afford to do an extra day because because we record on one day for yeah. all our content that often something happens and we just, we're behind the times. And uh, and talking of patrons, yes. this, the True Gamer Podcast, is brought to you by our amazing super bros over on patreon.com forward slash conversations. I did do the dab. <laughs> That's right. Even Who though do we have to audio. thank? We have Saki, the one and only, Comrade Conran, Diogo Doggo, Record Friction, Catsbud, the friendly patron, and Dan the Man. Thank you, bros, for keeping the lights, the mics on, and the gaming going at conversations. It's here. true. Yeah, so today we're going to be talking about some Xbox Series X details, some extra details that okay. came out since the last time yep. we spoke uh some issues as well that have come up with that and big one the other day there was a live stream a gdc live stream from playstation yes regarding all the details of the playstation yep. 5 lots of technical specs right there and we're going to be talking about we that. live streamed that i yes. really enjoyed it i kind of knew what i was getting myself into a lot of people yeah. were surprised but before any of that i actually want to talk to you because we got or you got doom a day early and we played a little bit of it. yes uh doom eternal looks incredible it played so Mm-mm. smoothly i Mm-mm. gotta say yeah that how are you finding it it's unbelievable it's absolutely unbelievable yeah. i mean it's getting raving reviews at the moment and totally justified yeah. you know where you see some games you're like ah oh, i wouldn't it's not my kind of thing yeah yeah this is the kind of thing for a yeah. lot of gamers i said what so great two or three months ago i think doom eternal could be a surprise shout for game of the year mm-hmm. i mean barring i know we're going to get the last of us and uh cyberpunk, cyberpunk Ghost of Shishima. but i said uh the doom will probably have may well have a surprise story credit in it mm-hmm. like it might get a vote for one of the better stories of the year despite being up against us i don't know because i know doom 2016 had these weird little glyphs that you could find it would tell you the history of the doom slayer mm-hmm. and um yeah i don't know i'm really looking do you know what doom eternal has in terms of story that's very interesting that sets okay. it apart so when you think of last of us you're like okay this is story i'm gonna get yeah, story yeah, yeah. story story with doom there is a story but it's almost like it's the ominousness of yeah, yeah, the yeah. like they're talking in the background about the story, yeah. and then every now and again you, it comes to the foreground. You're like, whoa, 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 what was that? What was that? It kind of reminds it's me fantastic. of like of, of so like the Last of Us. Half the story is actually, or maybe a quarter of the story is actually in the little things that Joel and Ellie say to each other as they're walking through things. And if you don't catch it, or when you're not, mm-hmm. you don't go to all the things, don't investigate all the things, you miss a fair bit of of them growing together, and. Um, Dead Space. Dead Space is a lot of stuff like on the walls and and um, mm. and like you you go through a place and it's like a kiddie play area, but it's covered in blood and there's yeah. a hand in the room or something like there's all those little things that if you don't notice it, you just walk through and there's a room on your left. But if yeah. you look, it's so much creepier. It's very much the same in Doom. You yeah. could easily just go through and kill everything, but then if yeah, you look yeah. around, you're like, whoa, yeah. like half carcasses on the wall. You're like, what? What is yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's oh my god, that's so cool. Anyway, yeah. So this for, for those of you guys that are new around here is the true game of podcast where we discuss everything gaming uh, put on by your best bros over at conversations um if you're listening to this podcast on podcast services don't forget to give us a five star rating on your apple podcast your google play stores your stitcher wherever you guys do it it helps us out a lot you guys can hear, uh, also get this podcast and a load of other great content at youtube.com slash conversations. Uh, subscribe there for more cool content like this. And if you like what you're listening to slash watch- watching, then please head over to patreon.com forward slash conversations. K- consider kicking us a few bucks because it helps us realize the dream of be- bringing you guys great quality content and stuff like that and having fun while we're doing it. True. Great stuff. Um, just a quick little update as well regarding the Conversations podcast. A lot of you guys probably saw what was going on, but 
It's having to be rescheduled. We're throwing uh, the schedule out of whack a little bit right there. So this week we're going to be doing this special episode of Combo, uh, sorry, True Gamer Podcast. Yeah, because instead of the Conversations Podcast, James literally has full-blown AIDS. He literally has full-blown AIDS. He's on death's doorstep. And apparently as well, something about his girlfriend, Elva, not letting him out of bed and not letting him see friends or even game. Mate, I think it's because she got... Um, she got Animal Crossing. She got Animal Crossing. The only real AC gaming going on in that house. Exactly, right. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And apparently only one person can do gaming at that time. So he's been bedridden, right. can't do anything exactly. else about that. It's, it's just a shame that he's uh, shame. he's not a true gamer. He's not a true gamer. That's why he's, That's not, why on he's not on the list. Exactly. Or the podcast, he's not a guest. Exactly, exactly right there. Uh, and anyway, instead you guys are going to get this special episode where we're going to talk about the next gen consoles, break it down in full. And then next week there's going to be the Conversations podcast along with Movie Club with the, oh, yeah. the Dark Knight Rises Finally, that's going to yeah. be fantastic yep, yep. and hopefully uh, the fake gamers over as always you know Crocodile Dundee was and that like James usual like usual sorry right, my apologies oh, oh, I misspoke cool. mm. we can't say those other names yeah, and yeah, ta- yeah. the second pack. best content creators on the interwebs exactly exactly hopefully they'll be able to make it next week everything seems good there and speaking of gamers for this podcast we like to thank our true gamers over at the $5 tier over at patreon.com forward slash conversations where you can also go to become true gamers and support us and help keep the gaming going. Who are those gamers there, Chef? We've got Record Friction, Saki, Comrade, Diogo, Casper, Zahir, Max, Dan, Alex, Adam, Furious, Coco, Fishy, and Moder- Modorox... Could- ben! <laughs> Modorox returns. What are you doing to me, bro? Apparently, he's teasing something. I'm going to give him a little free okay, shout out just okay, over okay, here. Okay. He's starting something up again. So, Ooh. everyone look out for Ben's stuff. Hi, That's hi. the reason why it's Modorox returns. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Cool. So, it's very cool right there. I like it. Anyway, thank you, True Gamers, for that support. Let's get right Let's into the meat of the stuff. So, First of all, let's talk about the Xbox Series X. Yes. We got all the information regarding the specs, and we're going to go through a little bit of the stuff here when, when it comes to the, the CPU, custom Zen 2 CPU, 3.8 gigahertz, 12 teraflops GPU with 52 compute units, uh, custom RDNA architecture, uh, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM. That's great. It's great. Uh, it's got two different types of RAM, which is a different bandwidth. We'll get mm-hmm. into the deeper that in a bit. Uh, one terabyte custom NVMe SSD, which is a very very fast, powerful version of an SSD. Yeah. Uh, very high throughputs, an expansion slot in the back for a Seagate partnership SSD sort of memory card type thing. Bizarrely, the thing I'm most excited for about the entire Xbox announcement. Genuinely. Yeah. Us and also Dan as well is very excited about that. Um, uh, external hard drive support as well using like normal USB A yep. ports a 4K Blu-ray player and a performance target of 4K 60 frames per second with the possibility of going up to 120 is that 120 at 4K they didn't speci- specify right. exactly because the first thing I would do is drop it down to like 1080 or, yeah. or 1440 or something like that and go for the higher FPS that's the very first thing I'm doing I I'm sure there are I think it's a bit like some games where a higher frame rate might be better or so I can imagine, like, if you're playing a puzzle game, you really don't care about frame rate. Yeah, I think at 60, you're like, it's good 120 enough. is not needed. Right. Yeah. But if you're playing a Twitch FPS shooter, you might go, let me give four, let me give 120 yeah, yeah. a shot. And that might have some serious benefits. So maybe you'd be like, okay, I'll sacrifice a little bit on the resolution to go yeah, for the higher frame rate. For sure. Rate. What I would like is, like what you said, the ability to just be able to yeah. change it. Be like, actually, again, go for frame rate. Go for if that. If it will do that. 4K at 120, depending on the game, that's insane. That's pretty fucking insane. And also, if you consider that it has a bunch of other features, which we're going to get into as yeah. well in a second, that might hinder it. So yeah, that's all the stuff that we had there. Now let's talk about the new things that they've posted. So Xbox have shown that they have looked at everything regarding the in-between stage between the console and the player. So everything in terms of the command that you're going to give, like a button that you're going to press, how much time that's going to take for it to actually react and come up on screen. Yeah. So the input delay and stuff like that. Basically, controllers are a middleman between you and the gaming. Yeah. And... Um, and even the console, because it's like has to display it onto the screen and then give yeah. it feedback. And so that's it's... previously always been a bottleneck. There's always yeah. been surprising bottlenecks. Like you have amazing internet, mm-hmm. but if you put in a PS4 from day of release, it can Ooh. it can't can't handle it. You know the terrible uh, Ethernet cards they've put in the beginning right. ones exactly. anyway, just to keep them cheap. 
They were so, so bad. Um, yeah, so they've uh, addressed nearly all of the points of bottlenecking in the whole uh, system. So they've said that they've reduced the controller input time to less than two milliseconds. So That's when you instant. Pr- press a button, it's instant, right? Yeah, Mirrors yeah. makes no difference. Two milliseconds you can't detect. It's like, oh, two milliseconds. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Drake, no, Mate, that's if what it goes, is. If it's plus 50%, it's actually three. It's not like you're going to go, ooh, that's Oof. laggy. Press, whoa, whoa, whoa. Jeez. Getting a bit of lag here. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm a true gamer. I don't, <laughs> nothing more than two milliseconds, okay? They've also looked at how uh, it, uh, the dynamic latency input, which is like a whole new system they've come up with to match the frames with the new monitors and whatnot. If you have a monitor that also supports the, the re- variable refresh rate, it will sync them beautifully together. Okay, okay. HDMI 2.1, whatever it is. But that's all really cool, and it means that everything's going to be a lot quicker. Yeah. The reason why I brought this up is because you know how certain consoles or certain devices get adopted by certain parts of the industry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, Xbox 360 was fantastic back in the day for content creators because you could plug in an Elgato and it was very easy. Yeah. The HDCP was easy to disable. Yes. Everything was great. So that was the co- the console of choice for most content creators. Yeah. This might make the Xbox Series X the console of choice for eSports because the input lag is next to nothing. That's actually... as <clears throat> I'm pretty sure we're both still going with the PS5. That's where we're landing at the minute, yeah. right? For various reasons. And we'll get into that reason. Yeah. Then, yeah. But that would be great. I would actually really enjoy if the Xbox consoles were the MLG and pro gaming consoles mm. at uh, tournaments and stuff. Because we need the competition. And I have said this forever. And I I was pretty open saying I think the PS5 is going to smash the Xbox. And it looks like they're more even than I mm-hmm. expected. But at least when it comes to content and stuff and sales, Sony's by far the lead, yeah. the lead horse here. And we need Xbox in the race. Yeah. They have to be there. They have to be nipping at the heels of Sony or we're not going to get the greatest products. Eventually, Sony will take a breather, you know, and they'll rest on on their laurels or whatever the expression is, and we won't get the best we won't get the best content, we won't be- get the best hardware, we won't get the best without Xbox in the game. And if Xbox takes over pro gaming, great. Yeah. Now it's 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 got that hook in somewhere in the field that it can't be shaken from and it can make its money from and yeah. still get its sponsorships and everything it needs it's like it's got a ground level that exactly. it can't go below exactly so it's not going to fail it can only go higher and they're exactly. a real threat all the time and that's exactly that's a very very good reason for them yeah. to have this I'm, I'm happy for them and this may have been very smart on their part they may have actually designed this whole thing thinking at least if we become the fastest yeah. then at least we'll be the f- number one choice when it comes to esports yeah. And then they'll again they'll have that base level, like and I said. I'm sure someone's going to say, but what about the guys that play on console on the, on the PlayStation? I'm sure there's a fix to that. I'm sure someone can just gut a PS5 controller and put yeah. in the stuff so it will communicate with an Xbox for pro tournaments. Mm. Um, there's always but, a way around it. Right, but if the console at the tournaments, if for some reason you're doing console stuff and it's not running through games rigs, then, you know, do it that way. Yeah. Um, I'm really happy about this. It's good stuff. Yeah, it's and good also, news. it recently came up as well after the uh, GDC talk thing with Mark Cerny and whatnot that PlayStation also has a very similar system with the whole HDMI 2.1 as well. So yeah, it yeah. manages to match the screen with the console so it doesn't have any sort of like frame drifting or tearing or anything like that. So that's really cool. It's kind of well, like those like softwares that. that you use to stabilize footage. It kind of predicts what that middle frame should mm. have been. Yeah. And like match everything together so it's all beautiful. The next thing we're going to talk about, so Xbox showed a couple of tech demo videos on their Xbox YouTube channel, which I'm going to pop up on the screen so you guys can see. Uh, The first one we're going to talk about is this quick resume tech demo feature. Yes. This looks very, very cool. Essentially what it is, is that all of your games that you like to play, providing you have them digital because they, I guess they have to be digital, will all be running in suspend mode in the background of the console. Yeah. They haven't said how many games this is going to be running and whatnot. There are some YouTubers out there that got hands on and stuff like that, and they've said there was only five and whatnot. Five's too many, I think. That's the thing I'm going to talk <laughs> about for sure. But right now, this is what it is. So you have a game in the background. You're playing uh, your like Forza Horizon they're showing here, for example. And then you immediately go to your, your Xbox menu and you go, oh, I want to play Ori in the Blind Forest. You go right into that after a, se- a few seconds of loading. Boom, you're right into that. Then you can switch into another game and another game and another game. And it's picking up from where you pause the game from. So let's say you're yes. playing a Call of Duty campaign. Mm. 
You press pause, load up another, you load up Forza because your mate jumped on. Yep. You play for 20 minutes because he only had 20 minutes and then you jump back on to Call of Duty. It will load up pretty much instantly mm-hmm. where you press pause from. The thing is, I wonder how how memory intensive this is. Yes, I wonder that's if, my fear. if this isn't going to just eat RAM or hard drive space. Because SSDs, one of the great things about SSDs is they don't have to spin up. That's why they're so fast. Yeah. It's just instant access. Yeah. And I wonder if the one terabyte of ter- of, of hard drive isn't really when you get it and have five games on the suspend mode. Like that's the only 200 thing, gigs, you know? That's the thing that I'm thinking. Because um, when I first saw it, I was like, okay, so how many games can you run without it? Because obviously you go, okay, so we've got... Say 100% is the processing power of the of the, the Xbox. And then you've got the game. How much is the game allowed to use? Because some of it's obviously the operating system. Yeah. But then if you also have on top of that games running in the background, that even if it's 5% and it's not you know, it's 10% anything like that. I don't think 5% is unreasonable either. To, to exactly. Sus- to have a game in suspend. Right. Like ready to pick up with at least... It has to remember le- everything. And... and- Presumably, it would be kind of like you know the double clutch thing where it would have at least the surrounding bit ready to go for you. So when you switch into it, mm. it can give you that, and then it loads up wherever you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I'm like imagining, say if you have like 10% for the OS, and then you have like a 5% for five different games. That's another 25. So 35% of that of the console is not being used for the actual game that you're playing. Yeah, that's a lot. That seems weird. I mean, to be fair, I don't see many people using this feature the way that they showed it in the tech demo yeah how many games would you ever be running in the background to Reason- be fair reasonably i think two exactly maybe three i think the, the, five's ridiculous the i thing, don't see anyone being five the thing you said about like you're playing a single player game like uh whatever is like ori in the blind forest yeah. or whatever, and then you go oh my mates jumped on forza let me quickly jump over there or call of duty whatever it might yeah. be then you play then he goes away and then you go okay let me go back to my original game or keep playing that game yeah that's the only thing that i could see happening yeah two games maybe three i could see having cod and maybe like fortnite up Plus mm. the last, of, as an example, on the PlayStation. Yeah. Plus the Last of Us or Halo, or whatever, where you go into the campaign. I could see that yeah. where you're like, ah, no one's online. I'll keep them up because my mates play either COD or Fortnite. But I want to play Halo. I want to yeah. play uh, Gears of War Seven. You yeah. know. I don't see many games being done, but it's a great demonstration. I have it to say, it looks really good. It looks super convenient. It looks very convenient, I very very cool and futuristic. I if, like it a lot. If we'd done a previous version of this that didn't make it, maybe you would have said something like, "It'll be one of the most underutilized features." And, <laughs> and I think had you said that, yeah, in this podcast, I would agree with you. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, how about I say it for you now? It, I think it's going to be a very underutilized feature. I think you might be right. Oh, it's so amazing. Yeah. I, I didn't know you'd agree with me on that. <laughs> it's crazy. I have to say though i do think it'll be like a good movie soundtrack which is that hope if if it works the way they say you'll forget it's a feature you'll mm. just be using it all the time well yeah. not all the time you'll just switch between a couple of games like it's instant yeah. and then when you go around to your friend's house if say they have a playstation and it doesn't have that you'll be like oh man you have to actually load the hot you know you it's, shouldn't notice it. I think it's genuinely going to be like that it's going to be a very cool feature people are only going to use it for two games maybe, maybe three, three. And it's going to happen so well that people are just going to be like, okay, this is just a cool feature I have on my console. It's just the way gaming works. And it's going to be great. I think that's what's going to happen. I hope yeah. I hope that when we get the consoles out and we get the YouTubers and the tech digital foundries and stuff like that, they get it and they don't try and you know do five games like they've shown yeah. here. And then it suffers badly. Because I hope that's I not what I could see happens. this being something that if you abuse it, will crash your your console, right? That's you could easily just switch it, switch it, switch it, switch it, switch it, switch it, you know? Especially when you consider that, like, Xbox is running essentially like a, a, a modified version of Windows, which Bloatware, the isn't the program, best yeah. thing ever. That's why people actively want to get away from it. Um, it, it seems like it seems like it's a lot of multitasking, but yeah. I mean, they set, they're confident in it. And they set their hardware up for multitasking. Mm-hmm. It's another one of those, like, decisions. Back in, like, the Xbox One days and while with the yeah. CPU and stuff like that. Okay, the other video that they showed was a Loading Times tech demo to demonstrate how much more quicker the Xbox Series X is yeah. compared to the previous generation. Mm-hmm. Now, this is uh, a bit of an issue, this one here. Yeah. So, uh, for the video that you guys are seeing right now in front of you, it's the Xbox One uh, X and the Xbox Series X both run in state of decay and showing the loading times for it. I haven't yeah. played this game. It's an Xbox exclusive game, but apparently the load times are terrible. Yes, yeah, so for those listening... 
the game took about six or seven seconds to load up on the yeah. Xbox One. Xbox no, Xbox Series, Series X, I'm sorry, right. Yes. And it's still trying to load on the Xbox One X. Is yes. it the Xbox One X or just an Xbox, Xbox One? Xbox One X. Okay, is there? So X. it's their current flagship yeah. one. Now, it takes about, I've calculated, it's about 45 seconds more than the Xbox Series X. And that's fantastic because the Xbox Series X is great and powerful. Yeah. But when I saw this, all I really saw was, wow, Xbox's current flagship console, which is maybe three years old, less than that even, yes. can't is is doing terribly. It's slow as frick. And you know that's what they were they weren't even thinking about. And it about just it. loaded in. It just so loaded. from when I told you you heard you saw it, that's the time difference, right? <laughs> I can imagine that these guys were like, we can show off how powerful our console is. So this is Suits. And they made the video and they were like, oh, everyone's just like, actually, now we're just looking at they how terrible it, the Xbox it, Series X is. They X's. published it and now everybody is seeing because this is the thing. Suits made this decision. Look, yeah. we'll show how good the next generation is. But what they're actually showing is how damn slow <laughs> their current flagship is. And there's a second problem here. Go on. Which is that the, the Xbox Scarlet, you know, the rumored less pricey version which is yes. still rumor but may well come out yeah. is going to be slightly less powerful it seems to save on costs than the current Xbox One X the flagship mm -hmm. which are you know there's po multiple questions here why even bother getting the Scarlet if it comes out why not get the That's Xbox the... One X and now look how less powerful <laughs> the, you know and of course in fairness right the Xbox One X should not touch the Xbox Series yeah. X it should be a huge jump like that but what they're showing is just how big of a gap, yeah. how slow it is. That's what all we saw was not how quick is the Xbox Series X, we saw how slow is the Xbox One X. What they're demonstrating to us is that the Xbox Series X is all great and powerful, but their current flagship model isn't that great. Yeah. And also the rumoured console, like you were saying, is supposed to fit just behind the Xbox Series X. So Which it's going to be ridiculous to even, begin with. Even less than... The, yeah. Ridiculous. Anyway, that's, for um, the record, that's what's shown there. For the record, um, we're not saying that the Xbox One X is bad. No. Or that that's what they were intending to show. It's just something about watching that is what you take away from it. Even if you're completely wrong. Because this the Xbox One X is a great console. Super powerful and all that stuff. Yeah. But you just... When you watch a video that's presented in that way... I think it's just hilarious that they were like, let's highlight how great our new console is going to be. What, Instead, everyone's just like, oh boy, that's bad. Yeah, oh boy, you're what, looking at the Xbox they, Series X. What they could have done is done things like have some infographics saying this, you know, the thing is a huge leap forward for, for you, the Microsoft gamer. It's six or seven times even more powerful. Look how quickly it loads this game. Not look at the comparison. The don't one, do the comparison. Don't do the comparison. That's exactly what right. What they could have done is got like a, a day of release, PS, my PS4, that's been beaten and bruised <laughs> for this whole uh, this whole life cycle. And they could have gone, look at this competitor console. Struggle to load this game <laughs> while we load this game. Oh, and here are five other games that we're just going to seamlessly. That's the way you do it. This yeah. unnamed other brand console yes. couldn't manage it. Yes. Um I think that's that's absolutely hilarious the way they did that and how the whole internet was just like, um, no. That is a visual of what I talk about when I say suits make these decisions. Yeah. Because someone said that will be a great thing to show and forgot the optics just like our snowflake and, and, and safe space, right? <laughs> they forgot the optics. Do you know what the genuinely what it was? They... they thought that people were dumb. So you know how like in Sony's presentation they talked all about numbers. Yeah. And it was very, very confusing. But there were some numbers that people understood. They yeah. were like a hundred times faster. Mean. They were like, yeah, okay, I can understand that. A yeah. hundred times is very basic. What they should have said was it does it in so and so faster time or X times faster. Yeah. It would have been great. But then they were like but people are dumb. They need to see things visually. Yeah. And all they did was visually represent how bad the Xbox the, the Series is, X is in this instance. The Xbox Series X is going to be, what, two and a half times more powerful than the Xbox One X. Something like that. Something two like in that. a bit, something like two that. Two and change. What they could have done is gone, the ne this new generation of things is more than two times powerful than the previous one, but it loads seven times faster. Yes. 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 That would have been so much better. Oh, look, boy. Look how quickly it loads this flagship game. Boom. Yeah. Press press A. Three seconds later, here's the game. That's how you do... Anyway, suits yeah. make bad decisions. They do. Anyway, the last bit of troubling news for the, uh, for the Xbox. Uh, these are two points right here. Um, it's confirmed to have no USB-C ports. Yeah. The controller 
the Xbox Series X controller has a USB-C input. However, <laughs> there are no USB-Cs on the actual console. So the controller is USB-C. So cord into controller is USB-C. Yes. And then cord into console is what USB-A? USB-A. USB-A. God. That's Why? a misstep. Why? Especially when they were thinking about... Because obviously USB-C's got higher um, bandwidth and yeah. more, so you can send signals. Not that you need a lot of signals for A. What, sure, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But they were like, we've worked out a wireless protocol to make the wireless speed immensely fast. Two milliseconds. And then they were like, well, we're just going to put a USB-C to USB-A. We're going to use technology that's been around since the 90s. That as well. We're supposed to be future-proofing this thing, and it's like... Oh, it's God. just not ideal, is it? It's terrible. And then one other thing, no optical output. For some, this isn't going to be a big of a deal. For some people who just plug in their console, play on their TV or whatever it is, that's yeah. fine. However, uh, sound systems and headphones have all been using optical output for the past... 10 years? 10 more? years 15. or more. Exactly. Yeah. I remember on the PS3, I used to use an optical output. Yeah. One. That's a very long time ago. My headset, in fact, my Astro A40s that cost me a good amount of change. They're nice headphones. Nice headphones, very much. They only use yeah. optical output because yeah. it is the best format. It's the best way to do it. And everyone else has adopted that. Yeah. And they've neglected to put that in there. What's going to happen in that situation? It's not... There's a lot of weird decisions being made about, yeah. in particular, weird little hardware things that the majority of people aren't going to notice. But guys like the streamers and stuff, here's the thing. If they make it 5% more awkward, let's say 1% more awkward in yeah. 10 different places on the Xbox, that might be the difference yeah. But for, for what streamers buy. And even if it's not what they're streaming on, because most streamers stream through PC. Yeah. But if when they say, I'm going to go play some insert exclusive content title, yeah. and it's the, it's the Last of Us, because it was just more convenient set up with all the stuff they already had, yeah. but that goes out to... 40,000 concurrent viewers, you know, yeah. like it's, it's just a bad, it's just bad from that sense. It's not really good for future proofing. The USB C is just a much better thing. It doesn't take me five attempts to get in the 50, 50 <laughs> chance. Correct. Uh, 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 and then it goes in right. there you go. <laughs> I have a 50, 50 chance and I've got it wrong. No shit. Seven times on the trot. <laughs> so this is a, a counterpoint to that previous esports thing that I mentioned before because yeah. the Astro A40 headset that I've got, the mix amp that it comes with, comes with like a daisy chaining feature which they put in esports tournaments to sync everyone's audio together yeah. and then record it through one. If they can't connect it now, yeah. what are they going to have to reinvent everything again? Unless Microsoft are planning to sell some sort of proprietary thing, which is I don't know, not out of the realms of possibility. It seems silly. Talking of Microsoft and proprietary stuff, should we talk about the uh, the thing, or do you want to compare stats? Because I see this little... This, let's this little wait until the comparison, which okay. is actually the next thing. Let's move on now to the PlayStation 5. So, yes. Mark Cerny came along. He gave this big uh, announcement. Uh, it was announced on Twitter, sorry, first yeah. of all, on a Tuesday, and they were like, tune in tomorrow, guys, the road to PlayStation. Everyone was like... We're finally getting PlayStation information. Everyone would get so excited. They assumed it was basically an E3 announcement. They were like, this is going to be E3. We're going to show off the console. That's what they're going to do. Yeah. And no, it wasn't. It was not. So it was named a deep dive into architecture <laughs> with Mark Cerny. Yes. The systems architecture. So that should have been a giveaway to everybody that this yeah. was not going to be what they I, thought. Didn't they say this is a replacement for them not turning up to the GDC? I think they said that at the stream. Okay. So it was very funny. It was like... Of, of course, everybody ignored what they said. What it said on the actual tweet. Of course. And then when they got there, it was like uh, I think it was um, Herman. I'm not sure who it was uh, who came up on the stage. He was like, "So because we couldn't make it to GDC because it's been cancelled for the health reasons and whatnot, we're gonna be making our GDC stream here now today. Thank you very much." And at that moment, it should have been to everyone. It's like, ah, this isn't what we thought it was gonna be. Yeah. This is this is hardcore tech nerds talking hardcore tech nerd shit. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It was meant for developers Even for us who kind of are into this a bit. Yeah. I mean, on the hobby side, we're into it. Yeah. It was a, a bit. To like, we had to be focused. Had to be focused. It was for developers to get them to wrap their heads around how cool this technology is going to be well, and not what just they developers, can do. It was for developers and those cardboard cutouts in the uh, yes. crowd. <laughs> Although they were moving, they were real so, people, but it looked very cardboard. I, were they real people? I think they were. I have a sneaking suspicion that they went onto like a, a stock image or a stock video website well, and they were like had someone silhouettes moving like that. <laughs> I don't 
know, it looked real, Maybe. but I was like, I don't know, I'm not convinced. Okay. Anyway, so they came out and Mark Sony gave this brilliant presentation in his lovely ASMR voice. He uh, really is chill. Like, if you wanted, if if you you wanted a... to sleep, and I don't mean that as an insult, I really yeah. mean he's, he's just very calming and soothing. I would love to have... He could read you anything. He could read you... Uh, the- Welcome to our uh, PS5 Systems Architecture video today. Hey, we'll, yes, we'll, do a print- <laughs> we'll do a little presentation. Thank you. He could read you, you the Red Wedding in Game of Thrones. And you're yes. like, oh, this is so relaxing. Yes. Oh, Mark. Anyway, he was it is fantastic. good because it's very intensive stuff. Yeah, and he's actually very good at presenting it. I really enjoy his, his genuinely. Uh, some people were saying like it's boring. I think you're more bored of the content. He, mm. however, does a very good explanation of things. I couldn't pick anyone better for the content that he had to present mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, he came out on stage and he talked all about the deep specs of the PlayStation Five and announced some very cool details in regarding the power, the SSD, all that kind of stuff. So we get a good grip of what we're going to be yeah. getting. And I've got a little table here uh, contrasting between PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X that we'll go through here and we'll talk about each point as we go yeah. along. So the PlayStation 5's processor, very similar to the uh, the Xbox Series X, an 8-core Zen, uh, 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 Zen 2 AMD processor yeah. running at 3.5 gigahertz with a variable frequency. That's the interesting bit. Yeah, they decided to go very different when it comes to PCs and computers in general now. Yeah. Instead of having a variable... Uh, Normally they're very power based on how much work the thing's having to do. Exactly. And this time around they've gone with give it max, give it, just power it up. Max power. And then vary the frequency depending on the workload that it's got to do. Exactly. Which is a very unusual but very interesting um, and perfectly reasonable, by the way, yeah. way of doing this. Yeah. Um, it's an interesting take. I think it will be really good, actually. It will be really good, especially because I'm going to go through a few more of these details. I'm going to talk to you about some tweets from some developers that came Let's out. Let's quickly well. do uh, the comparison, though. So the, yeah. the PlayStation is a 3.5 gigahertz processor versus the Xbox is 3.6. So functionally yeah. identical there. Functionally identical. GPU on the PlayStation is going to be 10.28 teraflops with 36 compute units running at 2.3 gigahertz. Again, variable frequency. Yeah. Uh, Xbox is 12 teraflops famously. That's the big comparison that everyone's making. However, it has got more compute units at a smaller gigahertz. So here's so the thing. A bit different there. So the, the stats read like this. The PlayStation has 10.3 near enough teraflops to the 12 teraflops from the Xbox, 36 compute units to the Xbox is 52. And, well, here's the thing. The frequency is 3.2 gigahertz for the PlayStation versus 1.8 for the Xbox. You had a good analogy for this to, to dumb it right. down for us. So, here's the thing. They both function about the same. We've seen that for yeah. rumoured anyway from, from hardware tests. And the reason is it's like having... The, the Xbox is one lane that's got 100 mile an hour speed limit, right? Mm-hmm. Versus the, the PlayStation, which is three lanes at 70 miles an hour. So it's which one can you get more traffic through? Well, it turns out the answer is about the same in both. Mm. So people saw 10.3 teraflops versus 12 and they were like oh it's way less power- powerful they saw um 36 compute units versus 52 oh it's got way less but yeah. the 36 are much bigger much they can bigger, get more traffic more through. frequency so they can get through and so it's just this really interesting thing where we've seen from devs in rumors that they're performing about the same actually a lot of them are saying that the playstation for for architecture reasons for things like the code optimization mm. and like where it's sending the traffic and and how much different traffic can be sent places is as good maybe a hair outperforming let's say yeah. the Xbox I mean they're close enough you would you and I won't be able to tell the difference yeah exactly and yeah. I'm guess it's going to be down to the exclusives and when they get dedicated work on dedicated hardware yeah. then it will, you'll see the differences um what the when it first came out and I don't blame people they all heard oh 10.3 versus 12 that's significant you that's guys, a 20% increase they've they've lost PlayStation have lost it and whatnot how can they come out with a, a less powerful console and that's it it's the nail in the coffin and I don't blame people because because for the last generation, that was what we was told yeah. for the entire thing. RDNA 2, if you listen to Digital Foundry, which Xbox endorses, they've even endorsed so on Sony. their own page, or Sony as well. They've even come out that the, the teraflops on RDNA 2 architecture is completely different to what we've known before. Yeah. And it doesn't function exactly the same. And these compute units apparently have a big to do with, with what, what yeah. the difference is. There was one tweet from uh, uh, Andrea uh, Pessin- Pessino. I think that's how you say Andrea it. Andrea Pessino, Pessino, yeah. He's a systems architecture and a designer 
are over at Ready at Dawn Studios. Those are the guys that made a bunch of VR games. They also made uh, The Order 1886, which was technically a masterpiece right there. Yeah. And he came out... A very good looking game. Very good looking game. Yeah. And he came out after this was all done, after everyone was saying like, you know, oh, PlayStation have lost it, saying... This is a tweet I'm reading out here. Uh, Dollar bet, within a year from its launch, gamers will fully appreciate that the PlayStation 5 is one of the most revolutionary inspired home consoles ever designed and will feel silly for having spent energy arguing about teraflops, in quotations, and uh, and other similar similarly misunderstood specs. Kissy face. Kissy Don't forget face. the kissy emoji. You've got, to, you've got to get that in there. I'm um, going to actually say, Apart from the fact that I am currently on the the PlayStation bandwagon, Mm -hmm. um, and for the record, again, I've had Xboxes last generation. I pushed really hard for us to come to the Xbox One, but we didn't. Mm -hmm, Uh, mm -hmm. And actually, that I think we agree that that turned out to be a good thing. Good, good decision. Yeah. yeah. But the real thing, because functionally, in terms of like hardware, they're they're actually close enough. Yeah. We couldn't tell. Yeah. It's the variable frequency stuff that PlayStation's doing. That is going to be super interesting yeah. because that's not the way most people do things, and it actually could be genius. Yeah, it could be really genius. And I don't. I put it this way: I think variable frequency is unlikely, super unlikely, to be like, "Oh, why did you ever do that?" But it could be the "Why haven't we been doing this yeah. before?" thing. It, could it be. won't be a huge problem, but it might be a giant leap forward for performance. Mm-hmm. So there's a whole bunch of other things as well, like we're going to get into later about the throughputs and like certain areas that would be bottlenecks that are so much more wider on the PlayStation yeah. to allow more more traffic through that I adds to all of this as well um so yeah that's one tweet and also jason schreier a guy we obviously all respect because he does amazing he's work one of and the only real games journalists out yes, there he's, yes. he's not just a journalist that looked for a job and this one was in gaming right he he's wants a game to find journalist. the news he wants to find the actual and information also he is actually a gamer yeah now, not like i wouldn't have him on my cod team yeah. but you know, every now and then you'll see this little tweet. It gets almost no attention, but he'll be like, "Oh, I just booted up some crappy game from like the nineties yeah. when that he likes to play." Yeah. And I'm like, no one would admit to that. <laughs> yeah. You know, unless they were really playing it. Like unless you're really, really passionate playing. about yeah, it. You're really playing that. Yeah. You know. He uh, was on his own podcast over at Kotaku where he works, and he was talking that he's spoken to a few developers who have said the same thing that the PlayStation is actually outperforming the Xbox yeah. Series X. It's just that it doesn't look right on paper with the teraflops, which yeah. is something that we've all been conditioned to look at. And I think what's going to happen, it's going to happen exactly what happened in last gen, yeah. where we got the teraflop numbers, we didn't really understand it because it was brand new wording to yeah. us, we didn't understand. And then we got the games that came out, and then it was like, oh, the Xbox is running at 900p versus 1080p, and I think that's what's going to happen with this gen. The other We're going to is- get the new, the th- third-party games, and it's going to be like, oh, this one can't reach this frame rate, this one can't reach this resolution, and that's when we're going to get our true indicators of whether or not it's powerful or not. Like we say, some of the stuff that we finally learned and understood, like, what is a teraflop? It's like horsepower, it's that kind yeah. of thing, right? In this discussion, it's kind of changed the definition. Yeah. So we're using an old definition to measure two new bits of kit. Yeah. But it does, like you say, on paper, it looks like the Xbox is smashing it. It does. But actually, in terms in of performance, areas. in certain areas, yeah, in terms of performance for gaming anyway, because it looks like they've done what they did last gen, which or this current generation, where the discussion was about what is the memory being used for? Mm. And it looks like, again, because we're about to get into these memory stats, that... Sony have decided this is a gaming machine. Yeah. And we our focus is on making only the games run as best as they can. So the architecture needs to be set up for like multiple sequential processing. So like for PS4 versus Xbox One, it was to do with the it was DDR four versus DDR three RAM, right? Was uh, it something DDR like five versus DDR four. Yes. Yeah. And the one Microsoft picked was good for multitasking and the one PlayStation went for was good for sequential tasking. Yeah. It could do sequential tasks really, really quickly, which is what you need for gaming because yeah. that's how gaming input comes through. And what Xbox did, they was wanted make more it so multitasking could, for their like snap features snap and feature, TV features and the background like UI, all that stuff, and needing to run stuff presumably for the bloatware that is Windows. Windows. And, um, <laughs> and for the record, I'm the reason I'm bagging on Windows as the Xbox's uh, OS. Is because I don't think it's the right system for it. It's, it's damaging to the 
guys playing it. It's taking up so much space. It has so many tasks running that... You could easily make a dedicated... I mean, not easily. It's not easy, but... They've got the money to easily do it. Yes, it's Microsoft money. But making a dedicated operating system for a dedicated hardware can only mean good things. Yeah. It's it's the fact that they wanted integration with all of their stuff so nothing can fail by itself, essentially. I wonder how... if So, we will get back to this comparison. (laughs) But I do want to know if Microsoft has the numbers as to how many Xboxes are actually integrating with the other features. Mm. I suspect it's not many. Yeah. Personally, it could be, and that it, if that is the case, then fine. I actually, it actually makes sense, but I suspect it's not that many. I think their biggest thing is that they want to make a because do you remember when when the Xbox One launched? It was very much we are Xbox, we make Xbox, yeah. And then when it didn't do so well, they were like, uh, but also our console is PC, and yeah. it's like you haven't touched PC for so long. It's good that you guys have come into it. It's a great business decision, but that's not your console. However, you guys do run the operating system. So it's a bit like, okay, you guys run the operating system. I think that's why they tried to make the integration yeah. as smooth as possible so they can go, okay, you're, you're is one and one go together now. Um, let's, right. talk, let's talk. Memory. Let's talk about this memory now. So PlayStation 5, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, which is a that's big nice. bump from the next, from the previous generation, yeah. which is, whole more bandwidth so you can get a lot more memory through it a lot faster a lot cooler it's a good decision the a very good decision the uh it was eight gigabytes of gdr5 in the previous one for the record i know tech dudes that yeah. are saying 16 gigabytes in a gaming rig is actually more than enough, Just and good enough. for future proofing as well they're like it, you won't actually need you know people are like i got 32 gig they're like you actually <laughs> won't need 32 gigs of ram <clears throat> Until 2025, yeah. minimum. You I know, remember when that earliest. used to be the thing, because I remember when I used to upgrade my computers and when I was like, more RAM, just more RAM. Yeah. Now it's like, actually, no, we need yeah. graphics cards. That's what yeah, we need. and that's the thing. And these guys are saying 16 gigs is more than enough for any gaming rig, and it will be for the foreseeable future. Yeah. So 16 gigs of DDR6 is a great... Uh, and it's they, these are functionally identical. The Xbox yeah. One's got a little bit higher bus. But. Xbox is one of 16 gigabytes DDR6 as well. But the big difference here is that the memory bandwidth on the PlayStation 5 ones is 448 gigabytes across that whole 16 gigabytes yeah xbox's one is split up into two different piles it's got 10 gigabytes at a higher gigabytes per second which is 560 but then it's got six gigabytes which is lower at 336 so it it's a bit weird. Maybe that's going to be used for the stuff like the features we said in the background. That's what maybe, I suspect. Maybe it's OS and whatnot. <clears throat> they want to keep that separate. Maybe just to save cost, they did that. That could yeah. be a possibility right there. But that could present a bottleneck that, as well right that, there. I guess it, I, I guess I'd say it worries me that <clears throat> that you're going to have six gigabytes of RAM pretty much dedicated to background stuff that you aren't getting to use. We don't know. We're, we're theorizing, yeah, it and way. it might not be for the whole thing. No, it, it might, might not. not be. And the thing is, it could reasonably, reasonably be like 10 gigabytes for everything immediate that you're doing, yeah. and six gigabytes getting the, the RAM-specific stuff ready. The double-clutch <clears throat> gearbox thing, like you right. said, and one of ways. Getting the next, the next gear ready for right. you. More. It could put, turn out to be amazing. Yeah. There was the ES buffer RAM that they had on the Xbox One that proved to be another bottleneck and whatnot, yeah. so, and that didn't work out well for them. This could be another case of that. It could be I'm nothing not at all. a systems architect. Yeah. But I do... You're not? Generally Is that not speak, what you mean like us? <laughs> <laughs> That's my PR thing. Um, the, I, generally speaking, as far as I'm aware, and this next generation, especially for consoles, does look like it is changing the game a bit. Yeah. Sorry for that pun. Um, but... <laughs> RAM is pretty much RAM. Yeah. You know, it's just immediate processing power as far as anyone's concerned. Yeah. And getting fancy with it and what goes where and slowing one bit down but the other bit's faster, I think is getting too fancy. Just give it a set amount and just let it do RAM shit. Yeah, it must be... There must be something. When you break it up like that, it must have some sort of There's issue probably a very good you... reason for it. Yeah. I yeah. just think that in general... I'm, I'm buying a gaming console. I want it set up for gaming, and that means RAM doing gaming RAM stuff. There must be something they're thinking here. Yep. Anyway, let's move on to the next one, which is the internal storage. This is yes. a nice one. This here. was a controver- so, controversial uh, bit. Yeah, so uh, the PlayStation 5 is going to have 825 gigabytes of a custom SSD that, uh, that PlayStation sorry, have made themselves, have customized themselves to be 
super powerful, super thing. 825 is a weird number. 825 is a weird number. Now, uh, Mark Cerny came up on stage and he explained it in his tech way. In and his I, ASMR. In it, it was yeah. good. So 825 gigabytes is the logical number that we would land on. Um, he came, he explained it in a very good way that I barely understood. Something about the way that you construct SSDs. You know, like when you get a memory card and it's eight gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, 32, 64, 120. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like a logical number. It's to do with the amount of channels or something he said and it came to this number for the amount of uh, bandwidth that they were going for yeah and presumably keeping it under one terabyte is a, a big cost saving that they could get i'd say to be honest i would say 825 gigs presuming that let's say you actually get that so you know normally when you get something so you get 100 gigabytes but 30 of it is the os yeah and other programs if you actually get a true 825 that's rounding up a terabyte. That's close enough. That's near as makes no difference. I mean, it does make a difference, but it's about one and a half games. I think it's it's right in that sweet spot because I remember when we did the the rumor that there was going to be people were saying there wasn't going to be a one terabyte storage in the yeah. PlayStation Five. It was going to be five hundred. We was like, five hundred is a lot less than eight twenty five. Eight twenty five is significantly more. Let's five, say that we was like five hundred for this current day and age of games where games are like over a hundred gigabytes. Eighty fucking gigabyte rendered, patches. Eighty gigabyte patches. Famously, I love how Call of Duty has God, ruined the a patch name for everybody. It's terrible. Um, hundred gigabyte games like Red Dead or something like that. Uh, Battlefront two. You'd run out in no time. Of course you would. 825, somehow, it's, even though it isn't one terabyte, it feels better. It's significantly more than 500, isn't it? It even, is. It's, and it's so much closer to one terabyte. You're almost like, okay, I get one less game. I think it just feels closer. You're like, ah, the rest of it's but, not bad. But I bet, actually, the, the savings from not making it one terabyte are significant. Yeah. I, I bet there's that there's That's that the reason ramp. why. That's the reason yeah. why he said, uh, he goes, so in his speech he said, it was like, the logical number we come up to is 825. But then we have our, we could go up to one terabyte, but then we have the cost and our consumers to think about who are going to be right, buying right, it. Right. So we decided to stay at 825. So the reason is the cost. And I'm hoping what they're trying to do is keep under that magic number that I've been saying. Yeah. If they can go 449, possibly lower. That would be amazing. That would be that amazing. gets into a discussion, which I maybe we'll have time for it later. But the you know the pricing of it, are they going to make money up front? Which is uh, yeah. In this day and age, I say there's no point. Yeah, we said that as well um, in the previous podcast that got deleted. And one we were saying that most companies they sell as a a, a loss, right? We yeah, said yeah. before the PlayStation Five was the ver- four, so it was the very first this occurrence cu- where this it current didn't, generation where it the, sold at a profit. This current generation with the Xbox One and the PS4 is the first generation in domestic console gaming that the producers of the console actually made some money on the console it wasn't much we're talking like 15 dollars a unit yeah right? it wasn't much yeah. maybe that previous to that they they were expecting to lose somewhere in the 20 to 35 dollar range is it something like it was like 15 to 25 dollar range. it was so a loss regardless. it was a loss up front by selling you the console they yeah. made a loss on the console and somehow managed to make their money back that's from things like printing licensing for games and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where they make all their money right. back, yeah. Except that now microtransactions are a thing. Yeah. And Epic does $200 million months. Yeah. And and every time a microtransaction goes through like a PlayStation, they get right. a cut of it. So they get stuff from Netflix revenue. that goes up, that if you're watching it on your yeah. PlayStation or your Xbox. And uh, Call of Duty just released an entire Battle Royale for free. You can yeah. you don't need the game yeah. to download this Battle Royale, right? Because the freemium model is so potent and makes so much money that now they can easily afford that because they know in the back end the money's coming. It's very, it's a very weird situation business-wise because it's very counterintuitive. If you think about a Completely. console being sold at a $10 loss, you're thinking $10, not that much, yeah. right? You can lose that. If you're planning to sell a lot, which every business does, you want to sell as much as you can. If you're planning to sell 100 10, million. 100 million times $10 you are well in the hole. Imagine walking into a meeting and say, hi, uh, so my business strategy is I'd like um, to lose a billion dollars. Yes. Pregnant pause. Like, And then all the stock investors just pull out. They're like, right. I'm going to want to... My plan so is to lose a billion dollars day one. Yeah. You know, like that's... That doesn't really work. It doesn't. It's counterintuitive. Yeah. But now in the day and age, like you said, with microtransactions, they take a cut of everything like that. I laid out they, my strategy for um for the defeat of Xbox as well, which is the the day of release. Every retailer's instructed yeah, three nine nine. Yeah. You know they 
four nine nine slash three nine nine. You know, and then if you gain twenty percent of the the domestic, the mum buying little Jimmy the console that he wanted for Christmas or whatever, ah, uh, I don't know, man. You know, anyway, and I don't want that. I don't. I actually, yeah. like I said, I think the competition's great and really necessary, but one of them seems to be making better marketing decisions than the other. Mm. Uh, let's talk about the hard drive though, because it's more than just the size, isn't it? Yeah. So the biggest thing with it is. The PlayStation's hard drive seems to be superior, quite vastly superior. Yeah. So it's all about bandwidth and the amount of traffic you can get through it, the amount of data you can get through it per second. Now, Mark Sony came up and he gave his speech and he gave all the numbers and stuff like that, which I'm going to read out for you now. The PlayStation's one, 5.5 gigabytes per second of raw data going through there. And if you compress that, you can get up to 8.9, uh, 8 to 9 gigabytes, sorry. So that's so... 5.5 raw to a max of like 8 to 9-ish of compressed data. Yeah, okay, exactly okay. That, yeah. And then on the Xbox side, it's 2.4 gigabytes per second raw, which is less than half of the PlayStation's <sighs> one, versus 4.8 gigabytes compressed. Ooh, so ooh. The, the compressed version doesn't even get to the raw output of the SSD in the PlayStation 5. This is apparently where a lot of the developers are saying this is going to change the game. Yeah. Now, they showed that's a very, very... fast as well, actually. <laughs> Mate, that's so fast. He gave a demonstration as well. He said the current gen consoles, to do one gigabyte, so one gigabyte of data would take roughly something like uh, 20 seconds or something like that okay. to do that. Yeah. Uh, that's actually he, not unreasonable. To do something like yeah. that. And uh, he goes, it's 100 times faster. And he got it down to 0. 0.2 oh. of a second. That's insane speeds so right there. Where this comes in for like us as gamers, why is this important, right? This is that bit in the game where you have to, you get into the elevator and you press the button and then you have that 30 second-ish bit, mm. 40, you know, somewhere in the 15 to 30 seconds where you're just milling around in, in the elevator, you're looking at your watch, you're checking your phone, uh, you're speaking to the NPC next to you, right? It's basically a, an interactive loading screen mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. the level you were just in gets deleted and it renders in the level above you, right? Where yeah. you're going to, because it's just, it, there's just too much there. And it needs the time. And it's just, instead of giving you a load screen, they give you this small, tiny little section while it renders in the bit above you. Yeah. But if it's that quick, how f you it don't, you don't need those. The only time you ever get in an elevator is when you're in a building and you have to be in an elevator, right? Yeah. Because for the story, yeah, that's... That's they, so fast. Mark gave a really, really cool um, uh, visual representation of that. The one time where visual is actually good. Oh, good. Uh, Xbox Tech Note. Um, <laughs> he, shown, he was showing instead of you don't have to have it this way, but if you wanted to, the hard drive is so quickly that you could get all of the textures and all the information off the hard drive into the CPU, onto the screen, rendered in front of you immediately in the field of view of the character. So you could be, and he showed this really cool thing, I hope I can get it so I can put it on the screen, where the character's turning and the textures are being loaded and rendered in like real time as the character's in looking. View. In the view of the character. I was like, that's how quick it that's is. That's cool. As opposed to now where it would be like, the character turns, goes to the hard drive, hard drive spins one way, pull the, pull the other way, pull the other way, load the texture, the pops thing. on screen, 10 seconds later, you got the and texture. this is one of the reasons that loading from digital, but in particular SSD, where it's great, because if you're reading from a disc, the, all the data isn't stored like linearly. Yeah. It has to read from multiple places and different points and, and find it. That's one of the bottlenecks. Yeah. And so this doesn't have that. It just pulls it and, and funnels it through instantly because this has all the channels that it needs. Mm -hmm. All of that data can just be pulled instantly and, and used. And this is where I think the devs are going to get to play. Because someone's going to build a game where they just render in what's in your field of view. Someone's mm. going to do a game where they do it the old way, where it just renders in stuff, but because it's so quick, you know, it's seamless. Yeah. And then probably someone will play with, well, how much, what is the ideal ratio? Maybe we should be rendering stuff for them. Yeah. Maybe it's 10% of what you're looking at gets rendered in. Like, you know, little, like, let's say birds. If there's a flock of birds or flies or something, maybe that gets rendered in as you look and the rest gets loaded in. Maybe it's 30%. And as devs get to play with this, they'll just become a standard of actually, if you're doing anything interactive, 15% rendered in field of view. Become a new standard yeah, yeah, yeah. shared amongst devs. And this this is the sort of thing, especially with the variable frequency, because that comes in big here with like yeah. how much how much RAM is going to get used, how much GPU, how much CPU. The once that all gets dialed in, this could be insane. And I I no joke, seriously, the variable frequency stuff 
could become something that goes into gaming rigs, which normally is the opposite way around. Like, you know, in, in cars, normally stuff gets developed in Formula One, mm. and then it comes to domestic cars like five, ten years later. This could be where someone makes something for their little golf hatchback, yeah. and it finds its way into Formula One. Yeah. Like, yeah. Th- that could be a really good system. Because this hard drive as well is so, so, so unique and so custom mm. for the place, I think there will be a lot of techniques that will get adopted and if Sony have patented this stuff, then they're probably going to sell they it to people. Have. We've one. done so many videos on patents and we never looked at the hard drives. <laughs> um, one other thing before we move on to the type of hard drives and more. Actually, sorry, that's going to come on later, the other thing I was going to say. So the um, what is going to be really cool about this is that this could be a revolutionary moment in how games are designed. Because yeah. as we said previously, the way it's done is if you want to load a new place, you have to put an elevator, you have to put an escalator, you have to put a, a windy corridor, a something or another before the next place gets loaded. And that was all just a clever way to hide a loading screen. And now we don't have to do that. Yeah. That opens up an entire world of possibilities of what could be done. And that could change the face it's- of gaming and we could spawn an entire new form of gaming. Absolutely. Which is unbelievable it's to, be really to think about. <laughs> and and to, to paint a picture for you, this is the reason that you go through that area, the door shuts behind you, and you can't get back through it. Yeah, because what's behind it has been deleted. Then you only see like a little, literally a picture, right, yeah. of what was behind you. But it's all had to be deleted so it could render in the stuff in front of you. Mm-hmm. That's why there are bits you can't go back from. Yeah. But with this, you know, suddenly open world uh, where you're in like a level... And the level isn't open. Mm. Suddenly it's all open again. Yeah. You know, it, there's just a lot they can do with it. And I yeah. hope they also play with uh, three dimensionality, if that makes sense. Yeah, you mean like different levels and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting. Let's move on now to the, uh, because the, I think we've thoroughly explained how we great have. this, uh, this hard it's drive really is. really good. Yeah. I'm really excited for that. The expandable storage. Yes. This is going to be an up and down pro and con moment right here. So the uh, expandable storage in the PlayStation 5 is going to be NVMe SSD card slot, which is essentially, do you know the connections that you get on like a graphics card and yeah, whatnot? Yeah, I've done that stuff. Before. Those kinds of yeah. stuff. It's that kind of SSD that's going to be plugged in. It says expansion expansion slot, which means that there is going to be an extra bay for you to be able yeah. to put that in, almost like a RAM stick slot or yep, one or yep. something like that, which is very cool. However, NVMe is very expensive. It is very expensive, and also one of the reasons you get a console is because you plug it in and it plays. There's no maintenance. Yes. It's just plug and play, and this is the sort of thing where, yeah, it's not hard. It, it's you not watch a YouTube difficult. tutorial. No, yeah. it's, it's take off a few screws, unclip mm. the thing, Get the disc or whatever you're using, clip it in, yeah. make sure you don't touch anything you're not supposed to touch, and yeah. re-screw things. Exactly. It's that simple. But it's it's more than what we're accustomed to for. It's opposite to the <clears throat> idea of console yeah, gaming. It's plug supposed and to be, put it in, don't need to think about it, uh, maybe every now and again do a delete of a game or something like that. Exactly. That's as good as it is. Xbox, on the other hand, they've come up with something really quite cool, a proprietary uh, memory card sort of expansion card that matches the internal um, hard drive exactly. So it's a partnership they've done with Seagate where they make these really cool looking cards that are very reminiscent of like PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2 memory cards. Fucking cool stuff that you just plug into a bay in the back and it's just expandable storage. They didn't say how much how much price price wise this is gonna be. But it's proprietary, it's a partnership you can only get with Seagate. I'm expecting it to be expensive. To be and same thing as well with the NVMe storage on the uh, PlayStation yep. 5 side. But oh god, could you imagine if they come out and they go Mate. like by the way, so here's the console, 349, and this memory card? The same price. <laughs> it could be. It could be that bad. But, but how do you feel about that? Mate, we're getting back to the PlayStation 1 with the my memory yeah. cards. You know? Like, I, I love that. I really like that idea of like, oh, you've got that game? Hold on, I got to this cool bit on the le- on the secret level. Let me just bring my card around, come around, plug it in. That's, back to the nostalgia days. That's the thing. So Dan brings up in a comment that we're going to read later a little bit of and whatnot. We haven't been confirmed that this is the, the case, right? Yes. But I hope, I pray to God that Microsoft have seen this. I pray to God because this will be such a huge plus that you can put your games onto it. And then when you take that uh, that card out, that game is on there and you can go to your buddy's yeah. house and then pop by there in This way. could be there. This is how you share games on Xbox One oh, X. It would or be. Series X. Yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? But they, they won't do it because they're suits. But it could yeah. be. <laughs> it could be. If, if they came out and said, this is how you share games. Or they said, look. Your friend needs to have the game, but this is how you bring your data with you. You know, 
click, mm-hmm. done. Go over, and they should have two Xboxes there. Yeah, plug it in and go. There you go. It's yeah. your game. You know, if it, if they can somehow mm-hmm. nail it, if it, maybe if it requires like a sign in or whatnot, it requires for that person's who owns the game and have to have an active sign in at that moment. No problem. No, it was it's fine. Uh, I know it sounds it's DRM essentially, yeah. but it's the convenience of being able to take your Absolutely. game over Plus to your that mate's house. Nostalgia of having the memory disc. Yes. <clears throat> it sounds amazing it, if they could do that. It by the sounds of it, the way we're making it sound is making a soft spot in my heart for yeah. for this. I want it to be that. On the other side, it isn't enough to make me want to get the Xbox over the PlayStation 5, mm. personally. And this isn't like the late 90s, early 2000s anymore. I, there's not many people's houses that I'm going around to with memory cards. But, <laughs> but little Timmy, who's 13 yes. or 14, he absolutely is. And he will be for the next five or six years. Little Ashton, he's going to go around to his mate's exactly. house. And he's going to be like, hey, do you want to play some Xbox? Because that's how he sounds. <laughs> that's how he sounds. Of course, exactly I wasn't just on a stream of his this morning. No, he no. was nothing like no, that. No, no, no. no, no. He, that was a different... He was a voice changer. That's what that's he used. That's what it is. He was wearing a Darth Vader helmet. So you know James Earl Jones, a uh, 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 commander, what are we... That yeah, sort of voice. Right. When you put a squeaky voice in that, then it gets, it doesn't, it gets right. to a normal level. Okay, so with, you, you go. with you, with you, with you. <laughs> but so guys like Ashton, like we said, yeah. this could be amazing for them. And he is a filthy Xbox gamer. I was yeah. watching him play uh, Arkham <laughs> City this morning, actually. We love you, we're joking. And, <laughs> but, like, this would be a great thing yeah. where you just unplug it, take it around to your mates, plug into his Xbox. Even if you have to do a sign-in, sign-in takes a few minutes, not even that, a minute. Not even that You bad. get to your secret level or whatever you're trying to show off or whatever. Like, it just... Yeah. That could be really cool. And back to the original <sighs> games hope. of my translucent purple, oh, X, Game yes. Boy Color. Yes. You know, like, the real... The true gaming days where... You know, nothing mattered, and all that mattered was getting flash. You could get through the the, the <laughs> Zubat tunnel and stuff. Yeah. Like, <laughs> mate, I bought the uh, fucking five hundred million PlayStation Four just because I wanted that translucent blue. I'm looking at it now. Every now and then, I see that. I'm like, is that is that a reflection or oh, wait, oh yeah, it's see through? And I, I find myself like I can moving see the around blue to through. look through. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> There's a reason why I put it nearish the window yeah, so yeah, the yeah. light can come it through. It does look cool. It's great. Um, so that's the thing. Now I've had a look by the way, about the prices of the NVMe PCIe oh, cards God. for the uh, PlayStation it's bad, uh, isn't it? 5. So there's two types. He said in the... Mark Sony said in his thing, there's a 3.01, which is not as uh, fast as the one that's inside the, the PlayStation 5. Okay. But that's the current gen that we have at the moment. Right. Um, they're coming out with new ones PCIe 4.0, yeah. which is even more faster. It's 7, gig- 7 to 8 gigabytes as opposed to the 5.5 there. Wow. So even faster, which is, you're not even going to be able to turn on your games. You're going to be like, ah, co- oh, it's on. It's you, know on. The, you know the restart yeah, yeah. thing, the uh, the quick play thing on the, the resume, the resume. quick resume, yeah. Where the first time you did this is years old now on the PlayStation Four, but you you'd hit thing when the you'd hit the PlayStation button on your controller while it's in rest mode and it boots up. And by the time you said to me the first time you did it, uh, I wasn't even comfortable yet, and yeah. I was back into the thing, and I'm still doing that, going, wow, this is amazing, yeah. you know. And the fact that basically at this point, above what was the next one? Seven, 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 seven gigs of raw. Yeah. That's so fast that, and it will keep getting faster because that's just the way these tech Technology, nerds are. Yeah. But at some point, probably right around now ish, <laughs> uh, you can't tell the difference. You There's don't no need point. that. That is like using the BFG to take out ants. You know? <laughs> There's an ant on your kitchen counter, so you pull out the BFG. You know, like. <laughs> This motherfucker, right. I'll show him. <laughs> yeah. I'll show you who's boss. Isn't it? The only time we're going to need stuff like that is when we have like neural connections and the, like uh, you know the movie Gamer with yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Gerard Butler. Yes. When we then we'll need throughout high so throughput. Like that's that. actually a good point because he did say in the thing we started seeing some stuff for the PSVR, didn't yes, we? Yes, we did. So maybe there that will be because you do have to render like a, an entire scene around you twice there's because a one lot for of, each eye and There's stuff a lot like of that. rendering stuff that needs to go on for the PSVR. Also PSVR 2 all but confirmed because all but confirmed. he did a lot of there was a lot of technical stuff for their uh their hearing 3D audio one which we'll get audio. into as well. Um yeah so the price oh yeah the three point zero one I saw a one terabyte Two hundred pounds. Oh, now in fairness, that's a one unit to one random dickhead. It's true. It's true. No, I would, so what I was talking about was the expansion. So oh. if for some reason right, you filled right, up right. your eight twenty-five, then you'd have to go out and buy one. 
around about the hundred, two hundred mark. I feel like I feel like eight hundred. Let's say games now coming out are going to average a hundred. Let's just yeah. say that, right? So, and realistically, let's say you only get seven fifty. Yeah. Because everything else is going to be taken up with other random bullshit. Plus, yeah. you need a little bit of space for patching. Yeah. Right, because it needs space to work to get in what it needs. Yeah. It doesn't actually add fifty gigs if it's a fifty gig patch, but it needs fifty gigs of space to work in. So that's let's say seven gigabytes. Uh, seven games, I'm sorry. Seven games at next gen quality is quite a lot. Yeah. And me at least, I'm used to deleting games that I've finished and I'm trading in for the next game. You know? Mm-hmm. So I do suspect that four years into this next gen I will want the hard drive space, the extra mm-hmm. space. But I reckon I can wait four years, probably. I think that at, at for that, the vast vast majority, that's good. I think for the vast majority, it's good. I I'm a bit different. And however. then it'll be fifty. Fifty will still hurt. Yeah, I'm spoiled, however, because the, the the PlayStation I got came with a two terabyte built in. Oh, that's nice. And I I just loaded it up. I was like, I'm installing every game I have on this I was, and every new one. <laughs> actually, on the Doom the Doom Eternal stream the other day, I was going to ask why did you have so many games on I've there, and like, how did how did you yeah, have so many games? I've got on like there? ten VR games on there I've got like another 10 of normal games you on do. there it's a lot it's it's a lot in there anyway that's the storage and that's how much it's going to cost I can't wait for them to announce how much the thing is that PlayStation don't have to announce their expandable storage prices because that's up to you to buy wherever you choose exactly. to buy however <laughs> Xbox is going to have to come out and say the expandable cards they are this price Ha, they, with with tax with with you want with ta- with and tax, delivery as well and of course well yeah uh, is okay. free, free delivery included yeah. you know after you spend over a thousand yeah then you might <laughs> then, then they'll have to say blur there you go massive price yeah. so that's very interesting um one other thing as well uh the external hard drive support very basic yeah. they're allowing you to plug in external hard drives and whatnot so you can play other uh, offload games onto there if you want to yeah it isn't going to be as fast as the internal storage so if it's going to be a bit of a bottleneck a game, though, it's not a big deal is it yeah I, I don't I don't really understand this one. They were talking so Mark Sony was talking about previous generation games could go on there because yeah. right now they're running on a basic hard drive. So putting yeah. on a basic hard drive you won't notice the difference. And some of them don't have loading screens like God of War or for example, right. where it's all just straight through and whatnot. So it'll be fine for you to play. I think it on he was there. really talking about like Final Fantasy IX, for example, right? Stick it on a thumb drive or, you know, whatever, on an external hard drive. The only thing is, and this is something that's been cleared up in between. Right. So backwards compatibility, that's the next thing. Yes. They spoke about it, and it was a little bit confusing and didn't really understand what was going on. There was a rumor as well that it was going to be fully backwards compatible with PS1, PS2, PS3, PS4. PS3 is the hard one, really. But... Okay. It's not true. It's At least PS4. for now. At least for now. Yeah, it's only PS4. That's not something that you can change really. Normal the previous way of doing things was you just include the previous gen's chipset and it has like a little PlayStation Put, uh, 3. Is exactly, that a smaller PS3 inside the PS4 yeah. and then a PS4 inside the PS5? Exactly. <laughs> so what is it backwards compatible with? PS4. Cool. Now, PS4 Pro and PS4 Pro, uh, the base standard one they showed in that graphic yeah. where it was like inside it and whatnot and it has a variable uh, CPU rate that it clocks it down yeah, to yeah, match yeah. the the PS4 so like would be blowing up the games. Yeah. I'm actually not too bothered by that. There, there it would have been nice. It would have been nice, but there aren't that many games on like PS3 and before that I want to play very often. And my FF9 that I got, yeah. that's running on my PS4. So if it runs on my PS4, then the code is fine to run on my PS5. That, that'll and, run on the PS5. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And presumably PS1 and 2 games aren't going to be that big of a deal to just port to PS5 code. A lot of them are available on the uh, PlayStation Store and stuff like that. But the thing is, is that it's in comparison to the Xbox's current situation. Yeah. Xbox have this great backwards compatibility catalog where they're just adding more and more games to it all the time, and yeah. it is just simply put the disc in if you have it, and then yeah. play away. And what are those exclusive <clears throat> titles again? Uh, uh, Halo and Gears of War. <laughs> That's the thing, is so. It? And and for the record, I do appreciate what you're saying. Yeah. But I just don't think there's that many titles. That aren't, haven't come out on PS4 that most people want to play. Yeah, that's the it's thing. It's only so, nerds like me that want to play Final Fantasy IX. So or someone, seven, the like actual Final Fantasy VII, not the you know the reboot. So someone said, and this was a, an interesting tweet that I pulled up, and it said, uh, "So you guys are all talking about which console you're going to buy and which console you buy. Let me just interject this for you guys: games that are rumored to be coming out for the PlayStation PlayStation Five reveal event." 
God of War 2, Spider-Man 2, a new Spy uh, Spyro game, Demon Souls Remastered, Horizon Zero Dawn 2, The Order 1886 sequel, PlayStation All-Stars 2, a new Kill Zone, Sly Cooper, Gran Turismo 7, Legends, MLB The Show, and the list just keeps going on. But the original Gears of War, bro. But that's the thing. So people are like, you guys are talking about all of this, and maybe you're saying that the X uh, PlayStation isn't more powerful because that was the, yeah. the, the idea at the beginning. But you've got all of these games. Are you going to give up all of those games? Yeah. Now, back to the backwards compatibility thing. We've played old games before. Yeah. We we still have nostalgia in our hearts. We love old games. We've played I them before. I have my PS1, 2, 3. You have multiple PS1s. My, I, and 2s. <laughs> uh, I got my N64, but no CRTV TV to, to play the one. No. <laughs> okay. But, so, and we brought the story up a few times. We went to a, a game cafe and... They had Goldeneye there, and we had Goldeneye right? on the N64. We're like, we have to go back to what was probably one of the original shooters. It's, like, it's, on, it's one it that I think of, and I think this is what got me into gaming. This is what got me into shooter games, because I think of myself as an FPS gamer. Mm. And just forgetting the fact that that old controller, which I love in my head, it's so nostalgic. I forgot that it's your left hand that's on the trigger bit, yeah. not your right, yeah. you know. Um, but forgetting that, like, it isn't what I remember it. In mm. my head... I remember watching it and being like, oh, it's just like when I watched the movie, these, gra these graphics are so realistic. I it's am Pierce sick. You know? <laughs> uh, and then it's not. It's, it's not. not at all. It's, it's, it's way worse than Minecraft. Way worse than it's Minecraft. It's a yellow pencil coming out of your hand. It really is. That's all it is. And and as much as I still have that, for, that, love, that place of love and nostalgia for Goldeneye and stuff, there are some games that you should let be in your memories, mm -hmm. you know? And Goldeneye is one of those. Um, Mario Kart 64 on the N64 is one of those the new Mario Kart's great but yeah. N64 and Rainbow Road let it be in your head I think that it would have been fantastic to have this it would have been fantastic to have the full uh, backwards I compatibility I would have said this is That's great it. and then not actually played it like, I maybe I've, I haven't I maybe would it, have tried Final, uh, I would have tried Vice City one more time oh yeah, which I actually bought on the Playstation 4 again to play again and I after literally after the first playthrough I was like I'm not going to come back to this Yeah, uh, did I would you have, cheat your way through it as well because I, I would have I bossed some cheats a few for the beginning bit and I was yeah. like but I didn't finish it I, didn't, I just played one sitting and then I went alright I'm done of that it was yeah. about two hours uh, I'd like to play Simpsons Hit and Run again yes. Crazy Taxi I'd like to play again yeah. But again, these games, I'm sure I'll do the one sitting. I'll be like, wow, that was nostalgic. It doesn't look as good as I remember it was. Anyway, I'm going to go back to this brand new game that came out today. Exactly. Doom Eternal. You know, yeah. it's going to be... I agree. People have forgotten how far gaming has come. But it's, yeah. because, <clears throat> it's because when you played those games, it was carefree. You were with your mates. It was oh, summer. Yeah. It was all those good things in your memory, right? Yeah. But the reality is that the games themselves, for the most part are not that high quality. It's not that they aren't great games, but, for example, storytelling yeah. has come a long way. If you go and watch an 80s movie or an 80s TV show, the storytelling, the writing, was a little clumsier. Mm -hmm. You know, If you think about it, film, as we know it, is what? 70 years old? Yeah. And in that time, it's grown so incredibly far, just from things like the filmmaking, the angles, and, and, uh, and the writing, and, and what effects can be used, right? And what people want to see, and knowing what the audience responds to. All that stuff, it's a relatively young field. And in it, in the early days is where things grows the fastest. And gaming grew ten times faster than movies and, and film and stuff. And just the storytelling's better. And the graphics are better. And the way you, you interface with things. Like, uh, the biggest complaints people have about The Witcher's 1 and 2, the UI. How, like, clunky and clumsy it is. And even The Witcher 3, you know, with Roach and stuff. Yeah. But, but the difference is it's so much better and been so vastly improved. By the time you're here that you don't want to go back and play, mm. you know, Vice City. Especially now. It's just so much more advanced now, isn't it? As I said, it's great, and it would have been so, so cool to have that. It would have been very, very little... wouldn't have been used as much as people think. That would have been the uh, that Xbox multiplayer function. Underutilized feature. Way underutilized. This is the thing. A lot of people talk about the Xbox One, because they say um, Xbox backwards compatibility, like, oh, it's fantastic that you can get to play these games again. And I'm like... Who's actually doing I, it? Though? How many? Uh, there probably are some people some who love people, it. Some people, for sure. But it can't be big enough that it's making this much of a ruckus. I wonder if the people that want to play Halo 1 on the Xbox Series X yeah. actually want to play Halo 1, or are they going to get the Master Chief Collection yeah. and play it and then up it, it and turn it back down because it's still going to perform That's better? It. That's it. So uh, the word that I wanted to say about the backwards compatibility is that after during the um, the uh, 
keynote speak, whatever he was doing on Mark Cerny, he made a weird thing. He was talking about testing and the backwards compatibility and how it's been going. And he said, yeah. it's been going fantastically. It's been working really well. We've uh, tried the top 10 based on playtime, play top 10 games on the PS4. And all of them, are, uh, vast majority of, the, of them are working fantastically. Yeah. And people were like, What's the hold one on, isn't? only 100? There's like 4,000 games on the PlayStation yeah. 4. Only 100? Is that all we're going to be getting? And then they did an update. And I want to read just a small portion just here. Uh, they put an update on the PS blog. They go, update. A quick update on backwards compatibility with all those amazing games on the PS4 uh, catalog. We devoted significant efforts to enable our fans to play their favorites on PS5. We believe the overwhelming majority of the 4,000 plus titles or P PS4 titles will be playable on PS5. So overwhelming majority, that still doesn't mean all of them. No. Nope. But it means that it's going to be the overwhelming majority and of them. And most likely it's going to be top down. It's it's most Definitely. likely that those let's say there's a thousand, which is a lot. I don't think it will be a thousand yeah. that you can't play. It will be the thousand that you've never heard of. Yeah, and ones you probably don't want to play or yeah. something like that. And also, uh, all of these games are going to be running at a boosted frequency. They said so. All of the games are going to benefit from a higher frame rate and a higher resolution yeah, if they yeah. can and stuff <clears> like that. All of them are going to look fantastic on your brand. The console. other thing is, so here's the deal. Remastered. Yes. So we got The Last of Us Remastered, for example, which is a PS4 title. And so you could get The Last of Us regular on PS4. Yeah. Well, are they going to bring those two games over? No, of course they're not. They'll just do the remastered. That's mm. the vast majority, isn't it? If you've got a remaster, then you don't do the original. You do the remaster. Yeah. There's just some things that make sense. Yeah. I'll tell you what's very interesting. The smart delivery thing that uh, Xbox mentioned about getting like the version that you're playing on. So if you yes. get the Xbox One version, you still get the Xbox Series X version when you put it in the console. Yeah. This is another version of that, except it's not going to be the textures that come. It's going to be like, you're going to get a much better resolution if you go by the PS4 version. And then again, it's going to be down to the developers yeah. like it is on the Xbox to update that if they want to. For sure. I can't imagine... I can't imagine a world where, say, the next Call of Duty comes up and there's a phenomenally better version on the Xbox Series X that goes out to everybody who owns an Xbox Series X regardless of what version they buy. And then they're just going to say, PS5, now you guys can go over there. Yeah. The backlash. The backlash. Absolutely. So this is a situation where Microsoft's initiative has helped everyone yeah. go go up here on that note though yeah i also do not see a world where activision put any devs oh, yeah. on on you know the back side of this you know <laughs> it's not happening because they're focused on the next cod yeah they start focusing on the next cod months before the current cod goes out yeah you know? and that's why you see no freaking support i want to ask you a question we've got two battle royales now from call of duty from different developers yeah. but both from call <clears> of duty <throat> Uh, the next one is going to be... Is it Treyarch working on the next one? Or I think is it, it... Is it Treyarch or Sledgehammer? It might be Sledgehammer. Yeah. Because um, they take like three year cycles, don't yeah. they? So Sledgehammer hasn't got a, a a Battle Royale. Do you think that when that comes out four months after release, there's going to be a Battle Royale for them as well? It so might be, be. Three Battle Royales in this already overpopulated fucking it scene. Really is. And then also three Call of Duties running in the background as well. I wish Activision would just say, we're making the Call of Duty Battle Royale. Mm -hmm. And it comes, get developers from all the sides, we're going to get the best bits, it's just the thing. right? Yeah. And it will last for two or three years until the next COD changes, you know, where the next COD changes so much and everybody wants that Battle Royale, then they go for that. Rather than one every year. That's stupid. I, I just, also didn't like Blackout. I was going to say, like it a lot. I, I didn't tried like it. A lot. I've tried uh, really Warzone like as well, yeah. and I'm, I'm done with Battle Royale. I don't. I wasn't in it to the in the first yeah. place. Like when Fortnite came out, I tried it a little bit, and I was like, Fortnite. Okay, different. it's all five year olds. I'm out of here. See you later. And I assumed that was for all Battle Royales yeah. then. So I've just backed out since then. And I've stuck with my story games and stuff like that. So maybe I'm not the I right mean, person to talk to when it comes so to Battle this. So Battle Royale's okay. I have to say, when it comes to the Call of Duty one, Blackout, I really didn't like at all. Yeah. I thought Apex was just the much better COD Battle Royale because yeah. it was made by Respawn, right? It's it's just better. Yeah. Um, I haven't really played a lot of this 
like one or two games with you. Mm. It looks much better than um, Blackout, but again, I feel like I might just jam. Apex but it has 150 it. players in them. Don't More care. equals better. Don't you know that? Right, exactly. The So Solid crew taught us that. True. <laughs> true. Anyway, and the final thing on this little list right here is uh, an optical drive, 4K uh, UHD yeah, they player both have, in both of them. Of course. Which is great that PlayStation are finally getting their own technology in the, one of their consoles. Right. <laughs> I had to buy an Xbox One S just so I can get a 4K Blu-ray yes. player. <laughs> so ridiculous. Yeah, so that's all the information there. The core takeaways for everybody who was like worried about the PlayStation, from the people who make the games, they're saying that the PlayStation 5 is yeah. performing better. It's going to be way more revolutionary. Um the Xbox is still fantastic. It's got such good raw power in it, yep. and it's got some great technologies going on. We'll see how that goes. Even the guys at Digital Foundry, they were saying this is a very fan- great console. Say. It's amazing how it works. I can't wait to see what Digital Foundry is going to have uh, when they finally get their hands on these consoles, because yeah. if you guys want to go see Digital Foundry's uh, video on the PlayStation 5, even he goes in to talk about it. The very first thing he says is that because of this RDNA2 architecture, we can't use the same metrics for teraflops yeah. anymore. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. So it's also important that. that Digital Foundry are the people that both Sony and Microsoft said, go to these guys, they know what they're talking about, yeah. they're trustworthy, right? And and they're saying for both of these things that they're both pretty much great. Yeah. You know, the Xbox is great and that the PlayStation has this re- kind of re- pretty revolutionary new approach to things and it's, they're both performing about the same, right? So yeah. really it comes down to, in my opinion, most important where are your friends if you're gaming with a lot of friends yeah. and secondly, what has the titles that you prefer? And also, which one is going to have a PS2 memory card slot in the back? Of it? Exactly. Like, that's the, the most those important. Are the top three. Thing. God damn it! Those that's what we need. Shit! It's Xbox, Xbox, and Xbox. Oh my god! They've won. <laughs> they've won. They've won us over. Uh, yeah. So that's all the information there. Let's kick it into a few of our bros at home who are watching and have written into our Discord server and, listen, and on don't our forget, Patreon. We're on podcast services around the world. We are indeed. Thank you very much, everybody, for supporting us over there too. Uh, we're going to start off with Diogo, and he starts off and he says. What does it all mean? (laughs) Nothing really hyped me too much, but those load times slash install times were pretty peng. I'm sure it'll be mitigated a bit with the game files being larger and at least, but at least it's improved. Backwards compatibility will be crazy at those speeds, he says. Yes. This hard drive is really the takeaway, I think. The hard drive's in. Really incredible, and also the frequency, the variable frequency stuff yes. is, is a change. Yes, yes, yes. It's a big change to the game. For the record, though, the what does it all mean? This was a tech demo. Mate. You know, it was a tech discussion. This is like if you go to a science paper reading or something. Like it's not for guys. I love science. Now you like looking at star <laughs> pictures from NASA, right? Yeah. You don't love physics and compiling mass amounts of data. No, nope, no. Nope. You, you know what it is? I, I put part of the blame on Sony. Yes, they could have I been clearer. put part of the blame on the gamers as well. So Sony could have said, guys, this isn't this isn't there for you guys. This isn't going to be E3. This is We're not going to show the console. We're not showing the price. They shouldn't have even done the tweet the day before. I agree. They should have just done a YouTube premiere goes up, videos there, discussion for devs. Yeah. Cool, no problem. They and then it would have been discussion for devs yeah. in the title. But they were like... Guys, PlayStation 5 is coming. Yep. Get ready tomorrow. A suit. A oh. suit made that tweet. Oh, wait. A okay, suit made that tweet. Place. Exactly. That was uh, that was what was going on there. But again, afterwards, I have to put a little bit of blame on the, the gamers as well. Yes. It said deep dive into system architecture. You wait, should have you're known. You're going to show me God of War 5? Are you kidding? Deep dive into system architecture. Oh, it has to be God of War 5. It must it be. It has to be. We're going to get to see the console. They're going to tell us the price. They're going to give me giveaways. Look under your seats. <laughs> Look under your seats, everyone. A you free get a system architecture. <laughs> and you get a system architecture. <laughs> that was exactly what it should have been. Okay, let's kick it over to our boy, Darth Cass. How's it going, bro? Um, he goes... Eddie, when will you become a true gamer and catch up to be in trophies? What a bastard. This guy in the Four Pillars chat, we was talking. Uh, randomly, I popped in and he showed a screenshot of his trophies. And he had like uh, 21 platinum trophies. Right. And I took a picture and sent mine. I was like, fuck, I can't believe I'm, I'm less than you. I'm only at 18. I'm going to do this tonight. I'm going to I'm gonna get more games tonight. Obviously, I didn't have get the time. guides up. In five minutes, he sends me another picture. He's like, I just got 22. Just got number 22 there. <laughs> Come on! How can I compete against this? And I think he's on 23 now as well. Mate. He tagged me in another photo. Anyway, 
But really, in terms of today's late uh, GDC conference stream things, we learned a lot about the specs uh, of the PlayStation 5. It seems like it's not as powerful as the Xbox Series X. That was the initial we've, impression. We've covered that we've covered million that. times. Um, uh, and that's all right. Better specs doesn't always mean better console. Uh, look at the Switch, for example. Which is true. True. No, it's really there. And the Xbox 360 to PS, uh, PS3. PS3 was 15 or maybe even 20% more powerful it didn't turn out to be the better console. It didn't turn out to be, no. Um, but always... Oh, that's actually a very good point, actually, with the PS3, yeah. You know? uh, but let's get away from this a bit. Actually, I don't want to skip that one just there. Because uh, with Insomniac and Gorilla both having three studios each, they're all, of course, working on different games. Studios say Insomniac are working on... Sorry, sources say Insomniac is working on Spider-Man 2. We covered that we did, uh, yeah. rumor there. And other another Ratchet & Clank game, which is brilliant news. But what I would love to see is a Resistance trilogy or a new entry to the series to be released. I'm a big, big fan of Resistance. And the Insomniac Twitter page have been uh, tweeting out pictures of Resistance, Chimera, Aliens... That has to mean something's coming. You'd think, right? Like, that's not something you would do normally. I mean, then again, the the Batman, the WB Montreal Oh, my God, yeah. They're not doing too good on their PR side. Bloody hell, They don't seem to understand the game they're playing. But I would say, yeah, I'd say that's all but confirmed if I were you. uh, That's what I would say. Let's just make a video. We'll say, we'll say, confirmed, new Resistance game coming soon, guys, coming soon. Uh, For those of you... just say we have inside sources and never mention them. (laughs) Our inside source says... Says this. Um, I was looking also for a, a tweet that I made. Okay, so here it is. So I made a very quick tweet as well after the uh, the actual conference happened and whatnot to judge everyone's uh, feelings for the console. Yeah. I said, very quick and simple question for tomorrow's True Game of Podcast. After seeing the PS5 specs, how many of you are still planning to buy the PS5 first? And 80% of people were saying, I'm still planning to get the PS5 first. Yep. Whereas 20% of people said, I'm not planning to get the PS5 first now. So that's still pretty high. I guess people still think about the games and stuff like that. I wonder if that would change if you, if the options have been still planning on getting the PS5 versus still planning on getting the Xbox. Because I think a lot of people would have said, I'm not planning on getting the PS5 as an answer to I'm going to wait a year or two before I get, go into right. the next gen. Right. Well, you I know? did say first, so hopefully they read that I hope first. So, yeah, but yeah. you could be, it's up for interpretation. Um, I... I do think that people were worried about the, the the power specs and the power and stuff like that. Had they had the message that a bit more clearly, or had they had some, if they had a tech demo of some sort for to show off the graphical intensity of it, people yeah. might have just been, I'm blown away. I just want to see I this. Think, I think you're right because this could that could have easily led to loads of titles where no one reads the actual article saying uh, PS5 less powerful than Xbox, Xbox 20% more powerful than PS5, right? Mm-hmm. And people just read the titles and go, oh, well, I guess I'll get the more powerful console. And yeah. they never look at the Digital Foundry stuff. How is it performing? What are the benchmark tests? How is it actually running the games? What are the exclusives? They just yeah. go, oh, well, one's less powerful. That's that. Only because that's a number on a page. But even from that, the Teraflops format is now, in this case, not necessarily the best metric. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he continues to say, the main genre where Sony is lacking in is in FPSs. Of course they don't need to, as they always have huge support from Activision with the likes of COD, but seeing games like Killzone and Resistance make a mark on the PS5 would be great. I agree uh, that would be great, and I'd love to see a comeback for those games because I'm a big fan of them. For those games in particular, or just for like PS5 FPS games, because I don't, I, I don't feel underserved being a, a predominant. I don't feel underserved being a guy that plays mostly on PlayStation for FPS games. Now they may, may not be exclusives, mm. but with Call of Duty and Apex Legends and and well, I guess some of those are third person but you know what i mean like a Fortnite and stuff but mm. shooty type games i'm not underserved they may not be exclusives but i get access to them and when i think of xbox exclusives i only really think halo yeah it's so only one that's where they got that's where halo got its footing back in the day it was, it was halo. the first mlg type game also with machinimas as well i don't know if you remember that yeah halo multiplayer was the big thing and they were like we've got halo over here you know that online game that everybody is playing and i think that's kind of where this question is coming from playstation in a very different position where they're uh, more based on story uh, focused games linear more like cinematic games and they stuff like that stick to it anyway those they are sh- the games that are winning all the awards and breaking all the records yes. and stuff like exactly you know. god of war game of the year um but they also 
it's also another side to it with the cross play happening and stuff like that now which is becoming more and more prevalent and I suspect it'll be very prevalent in the I next think so, thing yeah. um, exclusivity in a multiplayer game is kind of hurting you if you have it on all systems and whatnot then at least you get to play with more people yeah I think if you put a multiplayer game on a exclusive platform, you're restricting it from the get go. It's not a good business decision. I would tend to agree. Yeah, probably not going to be a good. Yeah, I mean, on the other hand, but then again, also he does say FPS, not multiplayer, which Killzone and Resistance are not. Killzone does have a multiplayer aspect to it, but they're a first-person shooter. I kind of understand those two games. I regard more of as a story game, even though the FPS is. They're set in an FPS function because I mean. Uh, Cyberpunk's going to be an FPS. It's not an exclusive, but it will be first person at yes. least to begin with. And I just don't know if if it's that big of a deal. I know it's, I'm not trying to like take anything away from from people that want a, an exclusive story based FPS or whatever. I just yeah. don't know how big of a deal it is. We're getting plenty of stories, mm. like I said, for multiplayer. You don't really want to make it exclusive. The other side to that coin is obviously then you restrict all the Xbox filth from playing. Yeah, only yeah, the yeah. only the civilized, cultured people on the Sony exactly. architecture get exactly, it. So yeah, yeah. I just I don't know if if it's that big of a deal. And like I said, you view things like Killzone as story based, really. Yeah. So. I don't know. It's an interesting one. God, I want another hit, uh, Killzone. <laughs> As I remember playing the Killzone in a uh, Killzone. Shadowfall, it was Killzone yeah, yeah, Shadowfall yeah. when it first came out. I loved Killzone as a franchise, so I was absolutely in love with that. The the gorgeous visuals that they had on launch and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing compared to what we have now. No. But on launch, it was like, wow, look at this gorgeous game and the different types of guns. I think you gave that to me and I played it a little bit and yeah. just didn't vibe with it. I was like, I get, I get that it's like, you know, steampunk Nazis or whatever, yeah. but other than that, and it's pretty... It just didn't vibe with me. It's very. I tell you what it is. It's the sluggish, um, sluggish FPS feel to it. So they, uh, they don't. Where do my glasses go? There we go. <laughs> I dropped the glasses. In. Um, the the it feels a little bit more chunky and it feels a little bit more weighted. Yeah. And that doesn't translate well when you have great FPSs that are leading the genre like Call of Duty, yeah. which are very fast, fluid, twitchy, and whatnot. I don't and know. Could this you one, get through Kill Killzone uh, Shadowfall without a uh, glitch where it wouldn't let you progress? I could, unfortunately. Well, so then so. it's a better game than the COD campaign. <laughs> How did you do that? I'm the guy. Yeah, and this is the thing. Everybody said, oh, my Jedi Fallen Order was fine. Okay, but mine had literally all of the bugs. So for those of you guys... And some that... that you didn't see online. I had bugs that people had never heard of. For those of you guys that don't know, Shep's played uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare and also Jedi Fallen Order, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Well, I streamed experienced... the Modern Warfare thing. This is the thing, because people saw there was something bug. that we could not fix. On Jedi Fallen Order, it was a Atrocious. I still really enjoyed the game, yeah. but I did not get a smooth, you know, game of it. I had I had to fight enemies where they were stuck in T pose. I had to fight enemies where they were red the entire the entire time, so I couldn't see when the unblockable attacks were coming, or yellow the entire time, so I couldn't see when the unblockable attacks were coming. I had to fight guys where their light lightsabers weren't out, but their lightsaber was out. You know, yeah. I had a lot of bugs. I fell through the the world a couple of times. I had all of the bugs. Yeah. I still really enjoyed it. It was pretty. It was Star Wars. The bar for me is like, you know, laser swords and space wizards and I'm yeah. in, you know. But the Modern Warfare one, that was on stream. Everybody got to see it was unfixable. I could not get I it to it. un... It wouldn't progress. The, you needed like another wave of enemies to come through so you can get through and it, it and it wouldn't in. come through. So nothing you can do about yeah, that. Yeah, really. we restarted but it was a lot of stuff. Hilarious. The amount of shit we was giving you in the chat as I well. Know. It was just like, this guy doesn't know how to play games. What a loser. What a loser. <laughs> That's, that was the most frustrating one because ones where the boss fight's just where you can't tell if they're unblockable attacks coming yeah. or something, right? It's annoying you die more times than you need to, or when they're in a the T pose, it just looks so weird. But I still beat the game. Yeah, you still get as long as I can out. progress, even if it's way harder and basically fighting blind, I can still do it given enough times. And I, yeah, okay, if it's happening, I'll turn the difficulty down and yeah. give myself a, a shot. But at least I can get past it. Yeah, that was really frustrating. I'm not gonna lie, because apparently it was great, and up to where I'd got was really good. Did you see the one uh, article? I can't remember who it was from, but someone said uh, Respawn uh, pushed out the game Jedi Fallen Order too quickly, uh, despite there being bugs in the game. And this was like, we were all like... Wait, there were bugs? There were bugs? Never knew. Sherlock fucking Holmes over here, man. Here's what I will say. (laughs) Respawn Respawn really are doing an incredible job, despite the fact that I got all the bugs and it was a little bit buggy for most people had at least one or two bugs, right? Yeah, it happens. 
But the game was true to Star Wars. It felt yeah. very Star Wars. They made Apex Legends, in my opinion, the second best battle royale yeah. out there. And absolutely worth playing, I think, where they failed was the store actually you're all about raid shadow legends right that's, that's it, it the most ambitious I something, know something that, of 2019 <laughs> i don't even know if that's a thing um, <laughs> let's ask james they didn't actually they didn't they didn't do that did it? it's not them it's not respawn no. no no they didn't do no, that no, but, no. and and timefall timefall 2 is incredible and yeah, just mishandled yeah. and stuff but as a development house as a dev house respawn are really on their game and they've they've proved it because normally Going from Timefall 1 and 2 and then Apex is basically the same game, mm. varying levels, right? Doing Jedi Fallen Order, entirely different mechanics. The combat's so fun. The, what they call it? Thoughtful combat. Yeah. So great. Um, it looked gorgeous. It was fun. The the designs, the way every different enemy felt different. Yeah. Unlike, for example, The Last of Us, one of my favorite games ever. There's four enemies. There's yeah. a Brer with insert weapon. And then three different types of zombie, basically. That's it. Mm. This, every enemy was different. They all had different weak spots. There were different ways to fight them. You could have the double-sided or one-sided or split them up. Mm. You know, lightsabers, different force powers. What are you going to... Which way are you going to spec? Like, they, they're they really on their game. I cannot wait to see what, what they bring out next. I did almost cry when I... Uh, you know when you get to an area and you can see there's, like, movable objects and they were highlighted in red or Oh, blue. my God, yeah. And it was red for the first, like, majority of the game until you got all your force powers. And I'm like, I must be able to do something with that, but I need to go around somewhere. Do you know how many times I fell into a bottomless chasm just trying to see if I could touch it or if there was a well, way you could get there? Or what? The and stupid, I can double jump, but I can't The pull. stupid part was that I was like... I would get to somewhere after I'd had the first lesson memory where he yeah, would yeah, remember yeah. that he can now jump. Some really, I was like, I get something. I'm like, I know I can do something here. I swear to God, Cal, if I, if I go around the corner now and I go do something and you just like, oh, I forgot I can now, that, I can now double jump. That is exactly I what I swear happened. to God I'm going to kill you. That is exactly what happened with the force pull thing. You see the stuff you're supposed to yeah. force pull. Can't do it until you have a memory. I'm like, oh, my, my master... Yes, he said, reach out with your feelings and pull. Yeah, okay, now I can do it. Now, now I can, I can do, do it. it. Oh, I need to jump and then jump again. Why didn't I think of that? Oh my God, two jumps. Also, yes. I had a real big beef. People saying, Cal Kester is such a great like uh, protagonist and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, hold on, guys. This is a dude that, that forgot how to run. Yeah. Literally forgot how to run. You like, had to be forgot. taught how to run <laughs> and do all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Cal Kester as a character is okay, but the fact that he needs to literally learn to walk again... <laughs> Not cool. You know? And it's not like he, he got bumped on the head and he forgot all this stuff. No. He just went into isolation. Yeah, that's the thing. He went into isolation. And that the chick, um, you know, the, the the black lady that was a Jedi that kind yeah. of takes you under her wing a bit, she kind of says, oh, you, you closed yourself off to the Force. But it's like a throwaway comment. Yeah. And, which is the presumably way you have to learn to... this. Stuff. Like, no, make a big deal of the fact <laughs> that he's closed himself off from the Force. Otherwise, he's just the Jedi in hiding yeah. who also... Carries his lightsaber on him while he's at yeah. work? Yeah, that's another thing. Like, even Ben would, like, put his lightsaber in a drawer somewhere right. or something like that. Ugh. Let me read out this one comment here yes. and see if you can think of something here. Uh, it's another part of Cast's one. He goes, um, with the new consoles on the horizon, maybe further away because of COVID-19 sh uh, shaping for them to be pushed to early 2021, which is an entire possibility. I really hope not. But if it does... Are we going to get a better price on them? I know they've put the price in up front, but if we look at it, if, um, if we price out the hardware in a year, two years' time, and look at it and go, hold on, mate, this is... I don't, if it gets pushed, I only think it'll be pushed to, like, spring next year yeah. or something. But I don't think it'll be any difference in price. I actually... I'm going to say this. Controversial opinion. Go on. I wouldn't mind if it gets pushed till spring 2021. 20, reason being... I, I know. Reason being, Cyberpunk then gets six months on the current gen mm. before we go to next gen because if you get cyberpunk you have it for three weeks it's true. next gen comes out and then they've september, already september november is so september is not enough time it's, it's not like, enough right why would i buy it now when i can buy it later and then you PS5? know it's probably going to get up resed on the next gen anyway because they've said if you buy the game you should get the best version of the game they know yeah. this game's going to next gen yeah, yeah, yeah so so the rest of the question is uh what games would you like to see whether they're new games remasters such as uh shadow of the colossus re2 or re3 or continuations in a series I would like, uh, I said before, like Crazy Taxi. That's one of my old... For, uh, for next gen? No, no, just to like come back, to bring another... Oh, okay. Sorry, hit, Simpsons Hit and Run probably be better. I want Simpsons More hit established and run. franchise. But also, I'm dying to see the next uh, God of War. I'm I'm just thinking about the uh, yeah. the ending and how it all ended. I won't spoil it, even though it's an old game. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm dying to know what's going to happen with those characters. Fuck yep. me. I got into a Twitter discussion with uh, you and then a few cultured individuals um, <laughs> about... about. We need a Superman game. That's what we need. That's what we need. <laughs> about another Witcher game coming. And I will say this up front. No more Geralt. Geralt story is done and he needs to be allowed to rest. And I think it would be a terrible mistake to bring back more Geralt. You're just risking the chance of... It could be amazing, but you're risking just underperforming, right? And just not being as good as The Witcher yeah, 3. Yeah, he's, he's already... He's put on a pedestal now where he's like, this is the exactly. character, this is a great game. It's Goldeneye. It, it's possible, but why risk it? Exactly. Why when, risk especially it? when you've got some great stuff. I mean, this is what I said. Um, prequel, young uh, Vesemir. Yeah. Vesemir coming in, you know, by the end of the game, he meets that chick that you meet in the DLC. Yeah. And he bangs the crap out of her and gives her the glasses, whatever it was he gave her, you know? Like... Vesemir prequel and then where like the Witcher schools are still up and we get to see what's going on he's doing stuff the world's the world's gonna be you know functionally the same in the way it treats witches but it'll be very different landscape yeah. you know Nilfgaard won't be a thing I was thinking if there was I can't think of which character it would be but one of the characters that we already know like a story of them and wouldn't it be cool to have like Geralt come in as sort of like a cameo appearance at one point and it'd be training? You'd be like, like teen Geralt. Oh Jesus, this is great! But I don't know which character it would be. I don't think I don't Kid think Geralt. Geralt will make a great one, a great game, full game anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Siri's awesome, but I don't think she'll make a great game. Like, I don't full think she's game a standalone game, especially when you play a Siri in The Witcher Three. She's very clearly overpowered. Yeah, you know, and she's supposed to be. Yeah. but like the fact that she can teleport everywhere. As just insane high mobility does about the same or if not more damage as Geralt. Yeah. You know, yeah, she doesn't have the signs, but she can literally teleport anywhere in the uni in any universe. Yeah, she can go to Cyberpunk. It's exactly. Displayed. She's just gonna teleport, come back with a bazooka. <laughs> you know, like, oh I don't have Eden. Oh well. What we're saying here is that we definitely do need that Superman game. Forget every other game on the planet. We need Superman. Green Lantern. Green Lantern game. All right, I'm sorry. We need a Green Lantern game. We need another one. The other we one was very good. The Green Lantern <laughs> game of the movie with Brian Reynolds. <clears throat> oh, so we, we got one back on 360. We need to get an up version of that. That's, That's what, what we, we need. Remastered right With there. Ryan Reynolds voicing himself. <laughs> well, so what? I wonder what... I mean, to be honest, we know that there are games. Like, we know there's a new Spyro game coming. And I would pick a Spyro yeah. game. Um, Hit and Run is a good one. Simpsons I'm looking forward really to the cool. Spider-Man 2 after we heard those rumours. We know and that's coming. You should check that out, by the way, if you're new around here. We made a, a leaked video. A um, <clears throat> huge info video came out of all the leaked information regarding the story, the characters and stuff like that. Sounds like it's going to be amazing. It looks really good. It looks like there's a lot <clears throat> to have to, for them to play with. There's a lot of stuff they could do. They probably won't do the stuff we talked about. Yeah. Like, it's set in winter, for example, and I said, you know, if you swing low enough, you should be able to, like, st surf on the on the snow, on the I sidewalks. I think you nailed that. I think they're actually thinking so. That. If, that, if that happens, I'm going to come out. Like, really... <laughs> like, I'll take credit for that. Insomnia, put my name in we're the gonna, credits. We're put my name in the credits. roll that footage in, like, black and white with all the artifacts <laughs> in the next video. I'm going to say, called it, and it will roll. <laughs> All right, let's kick it over to our boy, Jess. Jess, you wrote a huge, huge comment, and I can't read it all. You can't read. Especially me. that as well, I can't read. Uh, but uh, there was some stuff in there that you went off on some tangents. I'm going to have to cut this down a little bit. I'm sorry, but is this, this is the Google Doc do. Yes, it, it wouldn't, yeah, yeah. Uh, Discord wouldn't allow him to post a comment so big that he decided to put in a text format and send the text to me. This guy. That's and bad. Jess gives me shit. <laughs> So he goes, when it comes to the GDC video that premiered today, I thought it was very well done. It's clear that it isn't as powerful as the Xbox Series we X. Addressed that. We addressed that. Uh, however, PS5 has some blind sighting advantages over the Xbox Series X. Just like the Series X, it has some blind sighting... I think I read that twice. No, I've copied it twice. Copied my it bad, twice. my bad right there. Um, the SSD is the PS uh, in the PS5 completely shocked me. I was not expecting it uh, to be that fast. Mark Sony wasn't kidding when he said it was incredibly fast. It is actually insane. Like, Fuck, it's going to be the, the, the thing that pushes The it. difference, so people are like, oh, 12.3, uh, 10.3 teraflops to 12 teraflops. That's ridiculous. No, no, no. This hard drive difference, no joke, the standard raw data is something like uh, twenty percent faster yeah. than the compressed data. It yeah. is significant. That is a massive difference. Yeah, really big. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, this is one clear advantage it has over the Xbox Series X. The SSD is also 825 gigabytes as well, which is a surprising number. I expected it to be 500 gigabytes based on the rumor that we was talking about. 500 would have been depressing, but 825 is close to one terabyte, and it's yeah. a lot more than 500, which we'd all kind of got ourselves ready for. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Jas also sent me a link to a tweet that he said. Some guy was saying, oh, it's 825 gigabytes. That's the usable time, usable uh, area. 175 gigabytes is the operating system. Shut up. An operating system, 175 gigabytes. You're telling me that's basically two Red Dead Redemptions. Two Battlefronts. Two Battlefronts. What? Two The Witches. Are, Are you, you kidding stupid? me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> that, an OS that big could launch the species into the solar system. <laughs> You know, like they, no joke, your phone is something like 15 times more powerful than the OS that, um, than the, the entire thing NASA ran on to get people to the moon. To get people to the moon, right? Yeah. Didn't they use like PS3s or something, PS2s or something? Like, I don't know what it was. They, um, they, they put them into a space mission or something like that. They got PS3s to run the operating system for the one know. of the shuttles at one point. I was like, that's fucking insane. Anyway. Um, the SSD, uh, also their 3D audio sounds incredibly intriguing. When it comes to audio tech, I'm not uh, that deep into the infrastructure, but it sounds very promising, and I'm very excited to see uh, how well it works and when it releases at the end of the year. Yeah, so we didn't, actually, we didn't actually cover this too It was well. going to, but we didn't. We, yeah. yeah, we forgot to. Basically, they've done all this research to work out the best way to get your ear to understand where sound's coming from using the current tech, and they ended up with being able to determine a thousand different directions around you right because sound goes there's actually we we, we worked out on the stream it's like a hundred thousand different directions yeah, 100, 120 thousand different directions right. yeah to you know in normal thing and the basically previously sound was like it's like back and to your left yeah that was all you could do and your brain figures it out and because games relatively speaking fairly simple you turn to your left and behind you and it's good enough yeah. but this is just so deep for immersion and this was also coming in the VR section. They spoke yeah. about the PSVR and then they showed all this pretty insane research for detecting stuff. Pictures and of ear canals and the patterns and stuff like that. It was very impressive stuff. They even said that they're going to they're gonna start off with like 10 different presets and whatnot. But if you want to, you can send in your a picture of your ear to PlayStation yeah. and then they will then custom make you a uh, uh, HTRC, they called it, which is like a profile. So you get the best perfect... Yeah, I, I won't be doing that. So like, you know how like the people are like, oh, the government's got your face because of face ID. And then they're like, now they're going to have your ears. That <laughs> Oh my it's god, it's Big Brother trying oh, to get data on you. The government's trying to track us, that's what they're trying to do. But I, I do think this comes down to things like, you know, pretty much PSVR 2 all but confirmed. Yeah. We know this is more than powerful enough to run it, plus with that memory, all those different channels, yeah. exactly what you want for a PSVR yeah. a VR game. I think this is another area as well where they're going to revolutionise gaming as well. So, like, they've come out with... They've made this in whole technology themselves so they can make this amazing thing. Yeah. And like we said for like YouTube videos and stuff like that, you can tell when something's bad, audio is bad, because they've got a crappy microphone. Oh, yeah. When it's okay, you don't notice it. Yeah. But when it's fantastic, like when you listen to a great podcast with a beautiful yeah, yeah, microphone, yeah. you're like, oh, this person's voice is clear. And I think that's what's going to happen with this. People are going to put on their headsets with this new generation technology and they're going to be like, Oh my god, I can hear rain droplets around yeah, yeah, yeah. me. I can hear this monster a, a meter away in this area and over more here. Important, the porn. The porn! Oh my god. Oh no, don't do it, don't do it. Or oh, actually, you know what? The ASMR streams, that's fucked. Oh, the ASMR yeah. streams. Also, the amount of money these ASMR people spend on those mics, they are serious bits of kit that's the thing if you ever I think it's, porn always pushes any industry they forward do. but if you ever want to find a really good microphone a really good camera you just need to go to any cam girl and ask them yeah. for their to sell <laughs> no joke you, you think we're joking I actually looked up because um, we're trying to figure out a way to get the camera to stop record yeah. log yeah and basically these cam girls use you know high FPS so you hit up some cam girls and you ask well I googled them. what was the most popular Cam girl set up. I'll, I'll get up the hat cam girls for you then. Let's do it. It's research. Research. That's exactly right, what right. it is. I'll call them. You have to join the OnlyFans, of course. Yes, I have to. Yeah, just so. to check out. I have to check out the content to see if it's what we want exactly. to make. Exactly. Which, well, I mean, minus the, the naked girl. It'll be a naked guy, obviously. Obviously. Guy obviously, obviously like exactly. That. But yeah, let us know if you guys want to fund our OnlyFans. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, that was really good. Last thing I'll mention was the backwards compatibility. From what I read, it's PS5 games. Uh, 
only support PS4 games, not PS1, PS2, PS3, like we said, which is mm-hmm. a bit disappointing. Um, they do have the PS Now and whatnot, yeah. but it's not the same. It's not the same. Um, it would have been, uh, it's very disappointing, as PlayStation was the pioneer of backwards compatibility back in the day. It seems that title was shifted over to Xbox. Now I hope that isn't the case, uh, or it's subject to change, but it seems like it's a little bit changed change now. The next generation seems very promising. Xbox has come out hard of the gate, and Sony is clearly holding back on per, uh, info on purpose to make a reveal that will be, that will much more ground, that will reveal that much more groundbreaking towards to the industry. Uh, it can't, so I can't wait to see the games that come out and how quickly they can take advantage of this amazing hardware that's provided on both sides. This generation seems very promising. Yeah, especially that the different way the PlayStation's going about things. That really, and I don't want to sound like a PlayStation fanboy because ultimately I don't care which console we go yeah. to. Right, uh, that could really be fascinating and, and really change the game a lot. The backwards compatibility thing, I really don't think it's that. I think. Barring a few people, like we uh, we bumped into Trista Bites at um, yeah. at EGX. She's all about retro gaming, yes. and they do big retro. And people love retro games, but that community, while very passionate, relatively small. And I think barring those people who may not even bother getting a new console because they like to play the games from the nineties and stuff, and they have their old CRTV big box TVs, right? So they may not even bother. They, they don't want to, even if they do like retro games, people who do are really passionate about it, they're playing it on the retro system. They don't... For the most part, yeah. They're like, I want... The reason why I like it is because of the nostalgia. I want the full nostalgia right. experience. They, they're not downloading an emulator and playing it on their PC. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. actually have the stuff the, yeah. where the plastic was white and it's gone yellow over time. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. all that stuff. And that's what they love. And that's great. Yeah. And so I don't know how big of a crowd the, the guys that want to play those backwards compatible games really is. Mm. And like you say, maybe you fire up Simpsons Hit and Run for that one sitting. Yeah. But then your mate comes online and you decide to jump on... Call of Duty or whatever. Or a new game comes out and this right. is much more interesting Doom, to you. man. Exactly. And one final comment from our boy Dano. He goes, What do you think about PS5 requiring for you to install a specific hard drive to run the PS5 games? Once storage is gone, so once storage is gone, uh, while the Xbox is more of a memory card slash external hard drive feel where you can just plug it in. That was something we were saying before. The It is more to do. It isn't a great deal more to do, but no. it is a barrier that we we don't expect when we talk about console games. There are a lot of people that just say, I'm never taking this thing apart. You know, there, there are a lot of people that never service their own cars yeah. or whatever because they're just, I'm not a mechanic, for example. Yeah. Even though even the basic stuff, and like we're talking about with the PlayStation, it's yeah. very, very easy, but there are people like, I'm not a professional, I'm not touching it. Yeah. And, you know, I appreciate that. Then again, I think most people from this current generation are used to rationing their space and, and delete once you finish that game you delete it or like i almost always have the last of us remastered on because i know it's a game i come back to yeah but if i need space it's the one that gets deleted because i just download it again mm-hmm. you know yeah. it's in my library so i think i think it's not too big of a deal although i do want to say the memory card it's, it's amazing it's a very very good technology and it's a very good solution and it's really punched me straight in the nostalgia yeah like i really it, those are the best days in in a sense like for for me and it's like you know there's those companies that make like skins for phones and stuff like that yeah, yeah. they make them for like the nintendo switch and everything the dock even they just need to make one of those that's like a, a ps2 or ps1 skin the gray yeah, and whatnot and just yeah, put it all over that that's that's good enough, i would man. absolutely get that it's a very very good thing and if they can do that thing where we said where you can put the game on and you can take that to your mate's house that would be a massive, massive win and a very, very pro. That would be move. huge. The only way Sony could really combat that is if I can get that red light to one go blue while I'm gaming. Oh god! And two to go backwards and forward like a Cylon or like a kit. You know, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'd find it inconvenient. So uh, I find it inconvenient for people unless they make it nice and easy, a nice and easy bay for the PS5, which they have said it's a bay, but is it under the hood? We don't know. Um, but then again, I never upgraded the hard drive in the PS4, so I wouldn't know the ease of the process. It's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. But, but this is one point. screw and a clip of the hood. You've, you've gone however many years and you didn't do it. You're on the base 500 gigs. Yeah. Like, let's say I presume um, it's not. It's inconvenient sometimes. But it's not the end of the world. It's yeah. it's doable, right? And now that it's eight hundred gigs, uh, yeah, eight hundred gigs. Yeah. That's you know an extra what? Let's say two 
really large, three really large games yeah. additional to what you're used to. Yeah. And look, we don't always, have, once you're done with one of these giant games, the chances that you're going to have eight that you don't trade one in for the next one, relatively low, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my laptop makes it extremely easy to do that, which I presume this will be like, it'll be like installing RAM. On it will be very game. easy, yeah. Um, to me, the Xbox does make it easier to transfer games if a household has uh, one or more Series X and is going to a buddy's house. That's what we're theorizing here, and we hope this is the way that it's being done, Dan, although it's not been confirmed. If it do- does go that way, it's a punch to the gut for Sony. Very much a punch to the gut, and I would love that. It would be so sick. So great. Come on, man. Come on, Xbox. Do this for us. Do this for us right here. Um <clears throat> Remember, these games are expected to be massive in file size and their patches and updates are large at times. Having spare externals for saving games is uh, files is good for me. I always think about the, the broader crowd in games rather than the people who say, why do you need to have so many games saved? Uh... Uh, this is the same. The same can be said about buying physical game discs, which is not, which doesn't happen anymore on PCs. I want to skip ahead here as well because he also had a bit of a beef with uh, with Jack as well. <laughs> and I'm like, you're public. You're making your things public on the on the uh, True Gamer and podcast. While I'm here. all about the beef, and I'm happy to air oh, it. Yeah. It's just we're coming to the end of. The we're podcast. only getting the one side of the conversation as well. So even I'm, better. Like it's even out of context. I don't great. even care. <laughs> Next anyway. time, I'm gonna write in the comment to like maybe as always and be like, oh, and in response to Tyler talking about how. Torpedoes are just people too. Oh yeah, you know, you know. You <laughs> yeah. right oh, we should definitely do that. Go on to it. get them to read it up. Um, da, 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 da. Sorry for the long post. <laughs> uh, Xbox has a mini dongle type SSD that just simply plugs into the back. What I took from the PS5 is that they were going to require for you to install an SSD similar to the M2 or M2 mini uh, cards. This is a point of convenience, however, if you could just plug into the SSD into your Xbox compared to the PS5 that may require installation for internal, not external. The Xbox hard drive expansion is basically an external plug, which you can use into ad- in addition with the USB 3.0 hard drives for other games, backwards compatibility, and uh, and just to save space for the games on Xbox yeah. Series X. Yeah, so that's, uh, I that's think Dano there. I'm going to say... The internal stuff, it's actually not that big a deal. And I think 800 gigs is probably... I mean, we'll have to wait and find out and see yeah. how big these actual next-gen games really are. I think it'll probably be okay. I hope so. I also think that the almost 4,000 PS4 titles is going to be plenty. Yeah. I think the, the majority of people that want to play stuff on, say, like the PlayStation 1 that hasn't already been moved over, they want to play it on their PS1s. You know, the retro gaming crew, that's what they want. They yeah. don't want to play Pokemon Blue on an emulator they want to play Pokemon Blue on their Game Boy Color yeah, you know yeah, that's what they mean. want to do I think that we're going to have to wait and see the big thing right now is that people have this conception this misconception according to all the developers that the PlayStation 5 is very very much underpowered to the PlayStation yeah. so Xbox Series X I want to see some games I want to see what they're running I want to see more testimonials from devs I want some to see more of that tests. benchmark tests let's see side by sides side by sides with the two competing things don't show your old console exactly don't do that Microsoft that's a very bad idea and I hope that we get to see some more games as well. I mean, in the summer, we're apparently supposed to get a reveal for the PlayStation, so the Spider-Man 2, yeah. sorry. Despite all this corona stuff, I'm actually really hopeful for this year. Yeah, yeah. I, ho- if this I mean, we're all going to be inside in quarantine. No one goes outside. So but this you is get the thing. Delivered people, to are you. Saying, people are worried about the... the Because all the consoles are, are made and, you know, they're assembled and stuff in China and yeah. shipped there. They're distributed, distributed in, from China. Yeah. That will this have a problem? If the distribution distribution, God, that's a difficult word, um, <laughs> isn't affected, this is going to be a banging year because everybody's not going out as much. If yeah. it comes out you know, sometime soon, I'm just saying, like, this could be really good for gaming. There's people out there that are like, oh no, I'm going to have to stay inside and I'm in quarantine. And then there's us gamers that's like, God of War 4, I was Red Dead Redemption mo- I was moulded by the inside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, this is my true habitat. Absolutely. <laughs> A hundred percent. Us gamers are like, all right, let's do this. And Doom Eternal came out perfect time. Absolutely. Animal Crossing. <laughs> I, bet the, I bet the sales for Doom Eternal and Animal Crossing are through the roof. Through the fucking you roof. You know, apart from the fact that they're both brilliant games. Yeah. Just, but one thing I hope is that this audio recording does actually save properly. Yeah, we're getting to the end of this. And all. And as soon as we hit, I mean, you guys will know. If you're hearing our voices, You'll everything know. went I'm well. I'm going to actually tell you this. So here's what happened. The audio got somehow got corrupted, but there were blank spots, right? And now, 
we had about every two, five seconds. We had about two thirds of the audio was usable. The problem was it wasn't the last third of the co- the yeah. podcast because we could have just re-recorded it. It was into space every. 10 or 20 seconds there was just a blank bit yeah. and it wasn't that we could if it had been there were like 2,000 of them as well and if we had just had to cut them and it would you know m- merge it, I we, would have done that we would have spent two hours cutting it's it. just a bit of work we'll yeah. do it but it's but, more like and today we're gonna and that's the reason we're doing yes and here we are now. <laughs> you know, like, that's what it sounded like. like, shit, Jesus Christ. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of the True Gamer Podcast. We went a little bit longer than we thought we was going to go on yeah. this one. Nearly two hours we here. We were supposed to bang this out. <laughs> but you guys get a nice meaty podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed the shit we talked about here. I was going to say you get a nice podcast for your commute to work, but... Who, where are you going last two hours well, also, and also we're all in quarantine yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well you can walk around the house you can walk yeah. around the house and listen to it anyway guys feel free to write in anytime with any feedback any criticism any questions you guys have for the uh, True Gamer podcast over at Discord uh, you can check those links out in the description below uh, do remember to give us a like and if you're new around here subscribe if you're on podcast services head over to our YouTube channel and also don't forget to check out our Patreon it's a really cool place for some com good stuff forward slash conversations and we exactly. have a free Discord there's a lot of stuff that we do. Yeah. We're in a lot of places and we hang out with you guys a lot. And the Discord guys, they get some some uh, early access content. And the yes. Patreon guys, they get exclusive and early access content. Uh, it's yeah. pretty good. It's actually a pretty good setup we've got here. Pretty cool place yeah, to yeah. be. And next week, we'll be doing the Conversations podcast with uh, James and Crocodile Dundee over, yep. over there on yep. the uh, Like Usual place. Like Usual, usual yeah. Place I think that's the second best content on YouTube. Exactly, yeah. exactly right. They're second best ones. And um, yeah, we'll see you guys later. We'll Should we do our, our usual handshake? Yeah, and if- we have to make the noise as well. There, there you go. You can go. hear there the skin contact. See the audio waves. Yeah, you can beautiful. see it. <laughs> Alright, catch you later. Catch you in the next one.